Throughout history, free thinkers have outraged the religious with their wacky ideas about the virtues of free speech, reason, and of course, eating babies. Now, God is dying, and it's time to dispose of his remains. From the pits of hell, Satan sends two puppets of the imperialist West and the Zionist Jews against God, Islam, and tiny kittens to bring you their propaganda and conspire for a new world order. This is Secular Jihadist for a Muslim Enlightenment with Ali Rizwi and Armin Navabi. Welcome everybody to another episode of Secular Jihadist for a Muslim Enlightenment. My name is Ali Rizwi and with me is Armin Navabi. Armin, what's up? Hey! And uh, so, yeah, this is something, um, an episode, we have a repeat guest. And the reason we have a repeat guest is because he's become an absolute rock star since we last talked to him. Um, and uh, we're going to be highlighting a very important issue that we have been talking about recently on the podcast. And that is the LGBT or gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans uh, people in the Muslim community, the movement in the Muslim community. And that includes of Muslim heritage, that includes Muslims and ex-Muslims. Um, and uh, this is something that actually has been making a lot of headlines this year, especially. Uh, we've had the protests in the UK, where um, our guest lives. Um, in uh, Birmingham, several um, uh, primary schools, there were many Muslim parents who were coming in. They were talking about, why are you teaching our kids that you know LGBT couples exist, that they're there? We don't want them to know that they're a thing. Right? So there was that protest. We recently had Sophia Johnson come in and talk about that. She was a teacher formerly at one of the schools. And then uh, uh, we had a, an amazing presence of uh, ex-Muslims in the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain at Pride in London, right? And uh, there is a, a, a pretty iconic picture of Jimmy that you may have seen. He's holding a sign that says, make love, not Sharia. And then you had the Allah is gay signs in the back. And that absolutely drove people insane. So uh, I, I think that there is a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on, a lot of voices coming out. And Jimmy Bangash, welcome to the program. Hey, thank you for having me back again. Jimmy, it's a can pleasure you hear me? to be here. Yeah, yes, we can, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 don't worry. But I just want to add something to what Ali just said. Uh, I also want to make sure that we don't just f talk about... Because one thing that pisses me off is we're talking about Islam and gay rights. And it seems like we're just talking about UK, Canada, United States. And we sometimes are guilty of what we accuse other people a lot of people on the regressive left do which we completely forget about the main victims of islam when it comes to lgbt which is gay people living in islamic countries right mm. so mm. we really do have to highlight that every time we talk about these because they are the main people in need of attention so let's talk about that as well absolutely yeah yeah we will was, whilst we're just on that point uh, uh, and i just want to say it now because it's a good segue um, it's often we're hit back with this point, actually, of, well, gay people aren't being killed in the UK, so why are you protesting it in such a provocative and, uh, and antagonistic way? And our response always to that is that our commitment to universal human rights mm -hmm. as the Council of Exmouth and of Britain isn't based or limited to some imaginary line drawn on the map. So it doesn't matter to us whether gay people are being killed in London or in Saudi Arabia or Iran. Actually, we shouldn't limit our argument for human rights based on a border. It's they need such to be a universal. stupid response. It's that it's so because, what do they want you to do? Go have a gay pride parade in Saudi fucking Arabia? Like where, no, what where? they want us to do is not, not be so vociferous or so antagonistic or protest so much because actually the right to not be executed doesn't impact me personally. That's oh, the so argument. selfish. Okay. Just so dumb. Yeah. Yes. yeah so My human here's, rights this is the, me. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, the problem. The problem with that argument, unfortunately, is that uh, they know very well. That people and it's the same people crying about Palestine those societies as well. And the cannot thing. come out and protest without <laughs> yeah. severe risk to their lives. But okay. Ali, so that's the same thing. people who say this. Are and this also goes for Palestine Islam, all the you know, time. Just, uh, people, secular voices, right? Ali, you need to. Ali, your uh, your connection is not very good. And you're not hearing us speaking. Uh, but but yeah, you're right. It's, a lot of times it's the same people that I'm gonna. Uh, Ali Ali is frozen. Um, She's not on my it's a lot of, it's just, Yeah yeah, you're right. A lot of times it's the same people that are constantly talking about Israel and Palestine, and they when they, we talk about the oppression in Islamic countries, like but it's not happening here. It's By not way, happening Sophia here. is in the live chat. 
Oh, hey, hey, Sophia. Oh my God. Like this much. Yeah. Love yeah. Jimmy, it. Jimmy messaged me after your episode, Sophia. And he just said, I love her. She's amazing. This is the best I, podcast episode ever. So I literally sent the link to that podcast to every ex-Muslim I know. And I was like, listen to this lady. <laughs> she's saying exactly what people should say. And she's not letting her skin color stop her or the fear of being called a racist stop her from articulating her commitment to the human rights of people who are of Muslim heritage. Yeah. Like that's what yeah. we need to be. We need to divorce ourselves from this idea of identity politics, divorce ourselves from this uh, difference that we have around uh, melanin in our skin and just articulate our commitment to universal human rights. And when I heard her doing that, because it's so anomalous, because so many people who are white are shut down by, or sh shut down, shut themselves down by fear, uh, because of the fear of being calling a racist. And then when I heard <laughs> Sophia it was like five o'clock in the morning I was listening to it, right? So I had to yeah. I had to physically get up. I was just ignited with so much energy. I had to go for a walk at 5 a.m. I got about three quarters of the way through the podcast. Right. Then I had to find her on my Facebook or try and locate her on Facebook, <laughs> leave her two voicemails and say, I don't know whether to leave you voicemails or listen to the rest of this podcast. I'm so animated right. by what I'm listening to. Um, so yeah, I just think we need more of that. We need more people standing up for the commitment to human rights regardless of, of, of people yeah, so, of Muslim heritage. So one thing I just want to point out what you're saying is that there's an anti-white racism when it comes to white people speaking about anything Islamic uh, relevant yeah. to Islam. Is that, do you agree yeah. with that? I completely agree with that. And so I think also, I mean, it gets further nuanced and complex when you step into the gay community. Mm -hmm. So within the gay community, what we see is a lot of people of Muslim heritage saying, oh, well, um, there's so much racism in the gay community and uh, me as a brown person, I have to deal with all of the, the racism in the gay community. And, and um, you know, I think actually, if you live in the UK, you live in one of the least racist societies in Europe and there's in evidence the around that. Yeah, in the world, right? And, there, and then I think so, and then actually, if we look at the racism within diaspora communities so within like the people who always seem to be saying this at the moment that i'm interacting with are pakistani so i'm like actually if we look at the racism in pakistani communities like if becky comes home with a black husband or if fatima comes home with a black husband who is really going to kick off here you know like there's, there's only it's, it's not we're gonna either have to literally worry literally worry about fatima's life or Becky's life, right? right, right if we right. literally have to worry about who might get killed because I'm in some form of honor killing or deport back to Pakistan and they're not honor killing, it's Fatima we need to worry about, it's not Becky. So right. when we talk about this, this racism in um, the gay community that brown people are talking about, sometimes it's done in a way where they whitewash the racism in our own communities. Right, right. But that aside, now there's this it's not new, but I think it's quite new within the gay community, this racializing of Islam. Uh, and Islam is racialized, I guess, in some aspects in that, like, it's usually non-white people who are Muslim uh, in the UK. And so what it's kind of conflated with is actually if gay people criticize, if gay white people criticize mm. Islamic homophobia, that is now racist or islamophobic and it's a brilliant tool to I mean, silence gay people particularly if you're a white gay is man, it is now, it now, is now, it so. racialized because like okay correct me if i'm wrong okay mm. among all the countries all the countries that i don't think there's any ex exception to this every country that being gay homosexuality is punishable by death is mm. an islamic country okay yeah. and there, there is no, I mean, there are countries where homosexuality is illegal that are not Islamic, but every country that the punishment is death, it's an Islamic country. And the, the only thing these countries share, it's not their race, it's not their geography, it's not their history, and it's not their culture. It's Islam. Mm. That's the only thing they have in common. I mean, I don't know how... To make it more obvious that Islam is the problem. Yeah. And so I think when I say it's racialized, what I mean is if you're... So identity politics sets up 
white people over here and then every ethnic minority over here, doesn't it, right? So that's kind of like the narrative that, that, that it, it sets up around race. Yeah. So when you look at Islam in the UK, it's not white people who are Muslim, it's every other race. Right. So by a white gay man criticizing Islam, and sorry, not even criticizing Islam, specifically criticizing Islamic homophobia. This is where it gets mental, and this is what I mean, it's further nuanced. By having a, a white gay man criticizing Islamic homophobia, like I think it's disgusting that um, the way the. Why, why is it more specific? Why is it that when a white a man criticizing Islam, when it goes to LGBT, it becomes more complicated than other criticism of Islam. Yeah, so why is it more complex? So Because I think if you think about the, the, the whole ethos of identity politics, is actually that gay people would be seen as an oppressed minority against the heterosexual minority, right? a heterosexual majority. But something has happened where within with with white gay with with white gays particularly white gay males they're now seen as privileged because actually they don't have the level of homophobia in their community that actually uh islamic uh, gays do or people of islamic oh heritage God. who are gay okay. so now when you're t criticizing as a white gay man mm. uh, and also i think as a uh, as a white gay woman but less so but as a white gay man when you're criticizing islamic homophobia well actually you're just speaking from this face of privilege oh, and you're no. being racist <laughs> And you have to get your head around the insanity of this, like what's happened, like that you've got Pakistani activists yeah. who are male and female saying this to white gay um, males that can, you're can just speaking go, from a place of privilege. Can we go privilege. and declare white yeah. male cis people <laughs> as an as a oppressed minority? That they, and that it's now systemic as it's well. Now like, systemic, it's, like, it's yes. now systemic, yes. It's now systemic. The answer the, to racism the, is wait, not Ali, more racism. Yeah. Like, Ali, the, also, I, hang the, on, the, let me just... Let me just finish that trail of thought. There's a little bit of a delay, it. which makes it difficult for Ali to get in because his connection is bad today. But go on, Jimmy. Okay. So I think I've lost the thread. Let me just try again. So it was about white gay males who were criticizing Islamic homophobia. And then they get hit with racism and they're told, this is the madness of it. Then they're told that actually you're just speaking from a pace of privilege mm. but what we have to acknowledge is how perversely twisted the word privilege has become because actually if you're privileged it's kind of the sense of you just obtain you're just given something you're gifted something that is really luxurious like this human right of of uh, non-oppression around homosexuality but the truth for white gays is not a story of privilege it's the story of having to go to war to fight for their human rights in a country like the UK, all across the West, to win equality and civil liberties around gay rights. That is not a privilege. So if you look at someone like Peter Tatchell, who's a gay rights activist, a human rights activist, but has been on the front line of gay rights for as long as anyone has been fighting for gay rights, telling him that he has got privilege when this man has been like, punched in the face by Mugabe's security. He has been, you know, like, uh, hurled abuse at for his whole life because he's a gay white activist. But telling him that he's speaking from a place of privilege See, is absurd. I think, by the way, Ali is going to go, Ali is having some technical difficulties because there's some, their AC went out, but he, I think he's now switching to a new computer. So it's, when he comes back, it's going to be fine. Um, oh, no, no, I'm here. Oh, you're here. Oh, okay. uh, hi. Still here. Yeah, I'll oh, be switching soon. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't uh, I'll figure that out. Go don't, ahead. don't keep going in and out because I keep having to change the settings on OBS. Uh, but what I yeah. think the main uh, you guys are like the cutest gay couple ever. <laughs> I know. Uh, I love it when you is are. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I I wanted to say one thing about the white privilege thing. Is this yeah. that the the most powerful privilege in the 21st century is a sense of perpetual victimhood. Yes. That's it. If you, have, true. if you have this perpetual sense that I'm being victimized, you are more privileged in this day and age than mm. any group whatsoever. Mm. Right. That, that's uh, what uh, I wanted to say about another, it. Another, and, another, and let me I... just give you okay. sorry. No, let me just give you an example of how it's become systemic. Uh, because we had our first example that I know of. So, so uh, you know, the, the, my background is in human resources, right? So we had our first employment law case 
where a white straight male took the Metropolitan Police Force to Employment Tribunal and said, you didn't give me this job because I'm a white straight male as, as a member of the police force. And so the investigation and the, and the hearing took place. And for the first time ever, the, um, the judge found, the tribunal found in his Oh, wow. In his favor. And they were like, you're right. You weren't given this job because you're right. You were a white straight male. <laughs> Wait, in the, in the, and you were, in the UK? Funny. Yeah, it's not even funny, but I'm laughing at it because out of incredulity, like this is how bad we've got to like. So we Wait, would. But this is, this is, I'm, I'm actually hopeful. This is a good thing. The judge. Recognized. No, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But like Great. when you speak to, when you speak to, you know, to, to when you enter into this dialogue about minority rights and identity politics it's like actually straight white men um you know this redefinition of the word racist isn't it right so racist used to be uh, racist does mean sorry i'm not subscribing to the new definition so racism does mean actually discriminating against uh, somebody because of their racial heritage and, and their race and also often with a perspective of seeing one race lower than the other Right. Mm. Uh, so actually, racism against white people, by that definition, does exist. But mm. now what we see, you know, with the, the, the social justice movement is redefining racism as, well, actually, white people can't suffer racism because racism includes prejudice and power. And mm. because uh, minority groups don't own power, they can't be racist towards white people. No, but they, no. they do. Minority groups like Muslims are a minority group here. But mm. in Saudi Arabia, Muslims are not a minority group. And from mm. Saudi Arabia came the Arab Empire, which was as imperialistic and as brutal as any empire ever. So there is a power element. Like there, so, so they, they, of course they can be racist against white people. And they are. Um, people in the Muslim world, like there is a lot of anti-Semitism. There's a lot of anti-white racism. It's absolutely there. And it's, but I, it just depends on the vantage point. Ali, that's problematic because trying to relocate racism against white people outside of the UK or outside white majority countries is inaccurate anyway. So I'd say that actually I don't need to go to Saudi Arabia. I can look at the UK yeah. and I can say oh, yeah, racism towards white I people agree. happens here as per this employment tribunal that I, just evidenced I really, it. I really need Secondly, to make... okay, let, me, let, me, let me finish the point and I'll go straight to you. Secondly, guys, we have to get our head around this. You really have to get your head around this. Mm. Redefining the word racism so that it excludes one racial group is actually the literal definition of racist. racist. Yeah, that is yeah. racist. Like yeah, trying can to you say that racism. one more time? Because we say that one. Say that entire phrase one more time. So redefining the word racism that it, so that it omits one racial group, i.e., white people is the literal definition of the word racism as it stands in the Oxford English Dictionary. Right. Yeah? Exactly. So, but what they, so we're trying to redefine but it. But not so after they redefine it. But not after they redefine no, it. No, after that, it's fine. But, you know, let's, <laughs> let's redefine every word so right. that sexism doesn't include, right. you know, let's redefine sexism so that sexism doesn't, sexism doesn't I, include women. Right, right. And then, I, great, Let's redefine racism sexism. so that everybody's a racist except white people. Like, and tell yeah. me who's, why is my definition any any worse than yours? But here's exactly. the here's the here's the thing. I think the what what these so called activists are have completely lost is that the the entire point of activism is to is caring about other people and helping other people. It's not mm -hmm. about you. It's about other people, and their entire focus is that who's saying this? Who are you? Where am I standing where I'm saying this? Who, like, who am I that is saying this? What position are you in that is saying this? But the entire point is to shift the focus. You know, you're doing activism. It's not about me. It's not about you. Okay? It doesn't matter who you are. We're talking about other people. You can, okay, you can be whatever you are, whatever you are, whoever you are, wherever you are. How oppressed you are, how privileged you are, it's irrelevant. It's not about you. The point of activism is to focus on other people that need you. It doesn't matter where the source of the help is coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I, I so add it? I agree. And there's something in that, Ali, um, something in that, I mean, which is about the consistency of content of argument rather than the source, isn't it, really, mm -hmm. actually? So what you're saying is it doesn't really matter what my identity politics subscription is, it's the content of my argument, the content of my 
um, conversation that matters and the ideas that I'm espousing rather than my skin color, gender, sexuality. Well, yeah, that's true in general with regards to any arguments people make, but it's even more true with activism because the entire point of activism is to focus on other people rather than yourself. Mm. Yeah, right? agreed. But Ali, go on. So Ali wanted to say something. Yeah, no, I had a question. Uh, this, to play devil's advocate, I mean, there is, uh, in terms of who's saying it, right? Sometimes you do have, for instance, if there are neo-Nazis who have legitimate criticisms of Judaism as a religion, mm -hmm. and they come out and they speak, and those criticisms might be right, like they might absolutely be true. Um, you know, so you do have, can you have people like, for instance, uh, someone who has an agenda, like Katie Hopkins came in, and mm -hmm. was a bad example, but... Like, you know, she'll come in, she'll side with the uh, Shaki Lafsars and everything in the in the, the, the protest uh, in the Birmingham schools, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, she'll come in, she has a certain agenda, right, mm -hmm. to uh, against homophobia. So she's aligning with Muslims to say, so when she comes up and she says it, the way Muslims embrace that, in the same way, uh, can't you have people who have genuine uh, anti-Muslim agendas who will come out and uh, they will... Of white people and then they'll claim that you know you're being uh, you, know, you know what i mean i'm not being very articulate no no, no, no makes, i get it, it makes and, sense and, and well, I think I, that's probably not limited to white people though right you might even get ex-muslims who have anti-muslim sentiment right so right, I right. Think, so i think yeah, no, right, it applies to everybody some, yeah some idiots out there sometimes who do will have anti-muslim or anti-semitic or anti-gay yeah. views but but it would but matter who they are in the sense it that would matter who they were but the, in terms of the the argument they have the legitimacy of that argument doesn't change just the motivation behind that argument is different isn't it so whether your critique of islam comes from uh, anti-muslim bigot or whether it comes from an ex-muslim who wants to see the development of their community the content of the argument and its legitimacy its veracity is still consistent. The motivation of the person and whether you subscribe to that person as an individual is quite different. But I'd argue that the content of an argument remains the same. Okay. Um, okay. I would. I would actually want to point out. Actually, even if, whatever the source is, even it's like a neo-Nazi group or whatever. If they're making a correct argument, I. I I'll tell. I know, I'm going to get in trouble for this. The reason why even whatever the source is, even in the worst case scenario, but even when it comes from this, you know, the, the worst kind of people, why is it even there is important to recognize the legitimacy of an argument mm. that they're making, even okay. if they have a bad agenda, is because you could use recognizing the legitimacy of the argument f to lure them in. Okay, because we're not just, you know, what's the point of activism if we're not trying to change people's opinions, right? We're not just trying to change the opinions of Muslims. We're also trying to change the opinions of neo-Nazis, okay? Yeah. So, so I think if a neo-Nazi is making a point about whatever, about Islam, uh, and is correct, you could be like, hey, Mr. Neo-Nazi, yes, you're right, I agree with you. And by the way, I, you're c completely correct about this thing in, his, in Islam. And let me tell you, the best way to fight it is to befriend Muslims. And, mm. you know, and I think like a lot of people that are, might be attracted to neo-Nazi ideas or because of these arguments against Islam or any arguments against old, the old, you know, Jewish scripture, if that is what's uh, making them go inside, if we go in there and tell them that, hey, like we recognize that this is correct and they see that there are other people that agree with them on some things, but they have a different solution to these problems that recognition of the legitimacy might be the only thing that made it, might them might make them consider your views you know what i mean so yeah. i mean if i go to them and tell them like no you i'm not going to listen to you even though you're saying something right then i'm pushing them more towards that neo nazi groups right does yeah, I think so. I think you just said what I'm about to say in okay. different words. So I think the other thing that I would say is okay. So if the neo Nazis or whoever or the anti Muslims are saying some arguments that actually have got validity uh, and are accurate, if what I'm finding is happening now is and, and you know this whole kind of um, tangent of a conversation spurred off when we were talking about Sophia Johnson and I was saying actually she's not inhibited about what she's saying well actually i think for most people who are white they are inhibited about what they're saying because they're scared of being 
labeled a racist. And then the only voices who are coming up with legitimate arguments are people on the far right. Mm. And so all of a sudden, the only people owning this discourse are extremists. Right. And that's really quite dangerous because then we're pushing people into the arms of the far right because nobody like Sophia Johnson is speaking up and nobody else is speaking up like her. Right. But the more, the more of her that we have, the more normalized it is to then have white people criticizing legitimately, not from a space of hatred, but actually from a space of compassion. Like when you listen to that podcast, the compassion that there was for other people of Muslim heritage who were going to get arranged marriages, who weren't going to get their... Um, uh, full education, yeah, like speaking from from that perspective, we need more of that so that people but, aren't pushed but, into. But the it's arms. more. So can it's I? More, just one thing. It's not just. It's not just preventing people to go into this group. It's also about winning back some people from. Yeah, those groups, completely. Right? And I think they, recognizing the legitimacy of some of the points that they have is a good way of winning some of them back. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah and I, I wanted to I so, uh, to kind of segue into our the uh, our topic about LGBT especially because it relates to this, I think one of the front lines for this right now, the major front line is in the LGBT community of Muslim heritage. Mm. Because what's happening is that when, when you come out, you know, with those signs and those pictures, or when, you know, we post pictures of, you know, love wins everywhere with the rainbow Kaaba, right? Mm. Or, you know, had that picture of Sahel Ahmed holding up the sign that changed that uh, there is no God but Allah into mm. there, there is no God but love in, in Arabic. When you have that, it there is a massive homophobic reaction from the Muslim community. And this is seen by Western liberals and the, the people that we call the regressive leftists. And that it and they don't know how to criticize. They don't know who to criticize because do they side now with the um, the LGBT people and appear Islamophobic, or do they side with the uh, the Muslims and appear homophobic? And this yeah. is a, I think it's a great opportunity with this specific issue to get um, people who are regressive leftists to start really think about it, thinking about it, and align with what we're trying to do. So I think that the next, uh, and this is something Armin and I have talked about, I think mm -hmm. the next front line in this, uh, in the ex-Muslim movement really should be uh, when it comes to LGBT rights, because the nothing, nothing triggers, um, uh, you know, really brings out what we're talking about in terms of Islamic homophobia, than, uh, you know, talking about gays of Muslim heritage or lesbians of yeah. Muslim heritage. So you experienced that first line, you know, you were in that photo. Right? You were at that parade. You've been there several years. You you went, you know, that whole, the mosque of East London, I think, you know, caused a lot of, they complained to Pride. And then you guys had a meeting with the Pride people in London um, where, you know, you talked about, okay, actually, why don't you tell us about that? So the people in the East London mosque complained that, you know, yeah. they were, you guys were holding up Islamophobic posters. What was the meeting that you had with Pride? About? So I think that Pride is a volunteer organization. So like, I think like many of us, you know, we're all doing this work in our spare time, right? And, and Pride is no different to that. So the people who run and govern Pride, they're, they're volunteers. And they uh, received these um, complaints from East London Mosque. So I think back, that was in our first year. We're now in our third year that we marched. So in the first year, we had signs saying East London Mosque <laughs> incites violence against the LGBT, yeah? Like, so we kind of called out a specific mosque because they had hosted some um, some hate speakers, really. Some They'd invited some speakers over from who were imams and they'd done things like uh, how to sign, um, how to talk in the mosque. And on the projector screen had, had spot the fag and had a picture of like Elton John and Tupac next to each other. And then what? this Iman was giving like, uh, uh, I think you can still find pictures of that online actually. Um, wow. So, uh, the, so that was the level it got to in that mosque, right? And they were hosting some really, really uh, nefarious speakers from, from, a, from a gay point of view, but obviously from an Islamic point of view, they were to be lauded and applauded. Um, so we thought we'd call them out specifically as an organization and we did that. They wrote to Gay Pride and said, you know, those banners were homophobic, uh, you were carrying things, signs saying, fuck Islamic homophobia, Allah is gay, that's really Islamophobic. Um, Pride then launched an organization which took eight long months, but less because of activity, 
uh, then because actually it's their volunteers and everyone has a day job, right? So no activity took place over that eight, eight month period. So it was about two emails or three emails. We were really proactive trying to get them to meet with us. They were taking their own sweet time for whatever reasons. Mm. Eventually we got to meet with them and I thought the meeting went really well. So the, they understood, I think what they came to was the meeting was they didn't know what was going on. It was these people who were saying Islamophobic stuff but hang on a sec, they seem to be brown and they seem like they were Muslim once. Like that was just a complete mindfuck for them. They didn't know what the hell they, they were going to They didn't know what into. an ex-Muslim is? It's part, it's, no, they couldn't they didn't. understand that it's possible? They didn't. <laughs> yeah, so, and so who came to meet us with us was a white guy, a black guy, and then a Muslim a gay guy. But he dialed in over the phone. Um, so, and he was from an organization called Iman, who we can talk about later because I have like a love hate relationship with them. Um, so they, uh, met with us. I think, I think if the gay Muslim had his way, we wouldn't have been marching again, actually. But I think the other two guys, the white guy and the black guy, uh, and another ex-Muslim we met at, uh, earlier. Wait, did you just say if it, it, what you wouldn't be marching if what? So I think for for gay Muslims we can be quite problematic. So I think for some gay Muslims they wouldn't have us marching in gay pride. Actually, right. yeah. Do definitely. you think do you think gay Muslims are? I, the, here's the thing. I think gay Muslims are uh, be used as a way to show that Islam could be gay friendly. Um, and they are they are basically you know the whole I, my my main movement right now and I know I'm not I'm not doing that as much on this podcast because a lot of people have are tired of me hearing about and uh, are tired of me talking about it uh, but I'm doing it on the side uh, my main activism right now is to fight against reform reforming Islam right mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the main tools in the pocket of reformists. Are, are the gay Muslims to try mm. to portray like a more grand, gay friendly Islam? What do you think about that? Do I think so? I do actually. So I think, yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? So for reformist, yeah, it would be a way to wave a, rain, wave a rainbow flag and say, look how progressive our religion is now. <laughs> it's no different from Christianity or or, or or they'll say eventually, oh, the Prophet Muhammad was the first gay rights activist in 50 yeah, years. Gonna, yeah, yeah. They're going to say that. Do you know what? how he was the first yeah, feminist? Completely. Now they say he was the first feminist in 50 yeah, years. Yeah, they do. The first gay rights activist. I'm they do, you. they do. Yeah. It hurts, it hurts. Um, so, but I think actually if we're more honest with what's happening in the Muslim community, in the UK, only 18% say it shouldn't be criminalized, 52% mm. say it should be criminalized. So I think you're having a hard time trying to position Islam as some gay friendly progressive um, sort of uh, beacon, uh, particularly like Omin when you said actually the only countries that execute you for being gay are Muslim ones, <laughs> kind of a thorn in the side of your progressive gay rights banner, isn't it? Like, so I think it might be a bit of a struggle, but yeah, reformists yeah. will try anything. I just think it might be while we're here on this part of the conversation, distinguishing, because I've been thinking about this a lot, like the, what distinguishes ex-Muslims in pride from gay Muslims in pride and what we're both marching for. And I think it's probably quite uh, a nuanced thing to uh, distinguish. It's quite a nuanced point to make because we, kind of understand it but maybe not so can we spend a little bit of time on that is that okay yes, go ahead yeah, yeah. i i, I think i think we should but uh, can you just f uh, finish the story about the east london mosque and mm. uh, negotiation so how it ended right? up they met with us they realized that we weren't um anti-muslim bigots we we told them that actually you know we're from muslim heritage uh you're walking around uh, as we're walking around with our those gay signs behind us it's like, you know, like if I wasn't an atheist, I'd say that God had a plan. Like every time we walk around with the Allah's gay sign, miraculously from somewhere, somebody nearby geographically has got a Jesus is queer or a Jesus <laughs> had two dads. It's like you couldn't plan it. It has to have like divine guidance. So the, the so we pointed out to them that actually people behind us were coming. Jesus had two dads and mm. you don't seem to be pulling them into an office. So, you know, what sort of casual racism is this where white people can criticize their God, but when, wow. um, when, when brown right. people are criticizing their God or actually there's, this becomes really problematic for you because I'd argue that that's actually racism and it's cultural relativism. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously it was me there, Mariam, Sadia, I think Dan were there. By the time they left, 
they they understood that we weren't out to get Muslims. We were uh, Peter Tashel came as well. He's like a huge gay rights activist in the oh, UK. He's a great guy. See, but this yeah. is how you fight he Islam. This too. is you know you don't go fight Islam by saying like oh go f back to your fucking country you dirty like you know uh, something you know you fuck Muslims and stuff like that. You what? Go Who said that? Okay, no, Ali, I'm not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to get on that. Who, who I, I, that's, said go back to your country? Okay, okay, no, no, no. Go on. Um, that's not that, that. That is not what I was referring well, to. Right, I know, that's I know. Not, Who would yeah. ever say that? I know, but <laughs> no, no, I mean, whatever, let's go. no, that was that is not what I was referring <laughs> to. But I'm just saying the, the kind that. of hostility <laughs> that this is the way you're fighting Islam, Jimmy. That's how it, that's mm. how Islam fighting is done, right? The way you know you people that think that they're achieving anything by being dicks to Muslims, they're basic. They're they're the excuse Islam has to grow. But sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, so after that year. Yeah, they they said yeah fine we understand what you're about you can march with us we marched in year two uh when we marched in year two which was last year not much happens actually so lesbians stole the show last year so uh, there was a bunch of lesbians at last year's who were marching with with banners at the front they lay down on the floor they wouldn't let the march progress uh, and they were marching with banners saying that uh trans women are infringing on spaces of uh, of cis women and that kind of stole the show all of last year and then this year um, Gay Pipe was really about um, what I've seen come out of it was actually it was about LGBT Muslims but then also LGBT mm. ex-Muslims quite a lot, a, lot, a lot of media stuff came out about us as well um, so yeah I think it's quite important to understand because often what happens is gay Muslims will grab us and they'll throw us under the Islamic bus right of our community <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and they'll say to the Muslim community, see, we're just like you. We threw away these ex-Muslims and we, you know, we also tried to metaphorically kill them uh, underneath <laughs> the wheels of the bus. Uh, so we're part of the in-group. We're not part of the out-group. You should yeah, treat us Muslim. just like you're, we're still Muslim. And I think when you see gay Muslims marching in gay pride, and this takes us right back to the start of this podcast, is that they are marching for their own human rights, right? Mm -hmm. So they are marching so that gay people can be seen as uh, Muslim and accepted by their community. Mm. So it's all of, it's a really self-interested march. It's like it's about my humanity and I'm marching for my rights, but I'm also marching for other gay people in Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran. Do, do, are and, they scared of being seen with you guys with your Allah has gay signs and stuff? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. They would never, never, never. Damn. Everyone's scared of being seen with us, right? Like, because because <laughs> we're so we're so out there, but yeah. uh, and we're we're so not PC. And right. I think people are really worried about that. So there are activists that I know who who work in organisations that that agree with our cause, but would never march with us. Mm. Never, ever march with us. They would never march with us, yeah? Um, which is really weird, isn't it? Like, when you think about that, they're, they're aligned to our desire for human rights, but they would never march with us in gay pride because they see us as too... Uh, well, they see that the reaction we get isn't a favourable one, and they wouldn't want to be tarnished with a non-favourable uh, outcome. So, gay Muslims are marching for their rights, for forget for gays of Muslim heritage to be accepted. And then when you juxtapose that with ex-Muslims marching in gay pride, we are marching for everyone's human rights. That's the difference, right? So we're marching for Christian people in Pakistan who are being persecuted for blasphemy, like Asia Bibi, yeah? We are marching for ex-Muslims in Muslim-majority countries who are being um, oppressed because of blasphemy laws but how, can we you tell, for... how can you tell that the gay muslims are not marching for other gay muslims because so they are marching for other gay muslims the gay muslims are marching for gay muslims everywhere in the uk okay. in all across the world right mm. but what i'm saying is that's their identity politic groups isn't mm. it they are gay muslims so this is who they're marching for or lgbt muslims this is who they're marching but how for, do you know that, that they're not, they don't they don't you're saying they don't care about like ex-muslim gay ex-muslim yeah, so let me tell you how I know. Because if you care about us, you wouldn't throw us underneath the Islamic <laughs> bus. Okay, never mind. Yeah? But, and, and the reason you throw us underneath the Islamic bus is because we carry signs that are saying Allah is gay. Right. But actually, the reason that we're carrying a sign that says Allah is gay, or we're saying less Islam, more orgasms, whatever our sign is, right? Mm. We're saying this stuff because 
in, in, in the entire history of human rights, when you are trying to secure a human right, you enact it. So Rosa Parks sat on the bus. She enacted the right to sit on that bus, regardless of white people telling her to get off that bus. Mm. When we look at the suffragettes, they entered into male spaces. They entered into protest, despite people telling them, you shouldn't be doing this, and it's offensive. When we look at gay people congregating together around Stonewall riots, you know, the police were telling them and society was telling them, stop getting together in this gay way. You shouldn't be doing it. It's unnatural. So people collectively enact the right that they're trying to win. And so for ex-Muslims in gay pride, because we're trying to say that actually blasphemy should not be illegal, we walk with these signs that are essentially blasphemous. Mm. But nobody seems to understand why we're doing that. And actually, if you want that right, you have to enact it. It's not going to come yeah. by everybody not blaspheming. <laughs> and then one day someone says, you know what? Let's make blasphemy legal, yeah. even though nobody anywhere is doing it. Right, That's right, right. not how human rights See, work. And I think gay Muslims have kind of lost this sensibility because they seem to be ahistoric in their application of how they think we should win our right to blaspheme. It, yeah. And two, also, I wonder whether they're even committed to us having that right to blaspheme in Muslim majority countries because they say things like your signs are offensive and it's like our signs are offensive if you're a homophobe yeah definitely Allah is gay is definitely offensive to people who are it's, homophobic it's a compliment to Allah if you're not it's a compliment to Allah but also I agree that something like less Islam more orgasms mm -hmm. like if you're whoever you are you could see that as offensive definitely and i've had a few lgbt people reach out to me who are of muslim heritage or straight muslims who are really gay friendly saying you know that sign was really offensive and i'm like that's okay Great, that's that you're the point. offended but what we're saying is it's fine that you're offended but people are getting killed because they might want to hold a sign like that in pakistan see, so and Jim I mean, just yeah. one one last thing. So yeah, whilst sorry. gay Muslims are only essentially right marching around for their own human rights of their own identity politic groups, it's really important to acknowledge and understand that Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain, we march for everyone's rights. We are marching for LGBT Muslims. We are marching for Christians in Pakistan. We are marching for atheists in Iran. Hmm. When in China, they, were, they started that concentration camp stuff with um, Muslims, we did a broadcast and uh, we did a statement about it and posted it on our website straight away. Mm. When LGBT people in Chechnya are being rounded up in concentration camps, number of whom are Muslim, we speak out against that. We're not, we're just committed to universal human rights. We don't wait for it only to be our, our own identity politic group of ex Muslims yeah. to be accosted before we step forward for people's rights. And I wish we saw more of that from the LGBT Muslim community. D doesn't this show, the show kind of like how damaging, um, the, the damaging side of intersectionality, and I'm not one of those mm. people who thinks that it's all good or all bad. Yeah. Uh, there are positives to it, but this intersection that I am Muslim, but I'm also gay. So, you know, even though there is this contradiction because Islam says all these terrible things about, about Muslims and the Hadith and the Quran, but I want to defend that as an identity, but at the same time, I'm also gay and I want to stand up mm -hmm. for uh, gay Muslims all over the world. Um, that, uh, and that causes division with where they, they will not align with people like yourself, mm -hmm. that even though you probably have way more in common in terms of the purpose, right? Not belief, but in terms of purpose, um, then uh, from from a human rights perspective, uh, than anybody else. Uh, so yeah. By the way, it was yeah, my turn, but Ali took it. Sorry, <laughs> Armin. Sorry. Listen, you know I came to this late, right? So yeah, yeah. I'm catching up. I, I think also you're right. There's so much that does align us, but there's also this desire to frame our protest in a vernacular that appeases our oppressor. And sometimes I'm like, have you guys been in this fight for human rights for five minutes? Like, have you not learned that actually you don't tailor your message so that the people who are oppressing you are happy with it? Like, that's, yeah. that's not how we fight for <laughs> human rights. And, and I think this comes from, you know, that whole thing about gay Muslims wanting to be accepted by the Muslim community. Whereas ex-Muslims, we're like, yeah, we do want to be accepted by the Muslim community. But what, what has to stop first is... 
our oppression and we're not going to tailor our message and it has to be on our terms yeah. Yeah, no, we exactly. don't want to be we don't want to be accepted with conditions we don't want to yeah. be accepted with the conditions that we keep our mouth shut we want to yeah. be accepted while we say fuck Allah and burn the Quran on YouTube and you have mm. that's the mm. level of acceptance we want right we, yeah. we, we, if you criticize if we if you like oh we're tolerant of atheists but those only those ones that don't sp sp uh, say anything against Islam yeah no no sorry that's not the tolerance mm. that we want we want you to tolerate us I mean come on your book tells us we're we're I mean read your own book like at least uh, the way the way we're described in your book uh, we tolerate that shit, right? We let you yeah. preach that book, so you should tolerate us shitting on Islam. Yeah, but and this, this no, 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 Ali, let me finish. Yeah, my, go on, finish. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because a couple of things I wanted to mention. And you know, in the video that I, I had with the, you know, in the Vancouver Pride, the Allah is gay, um, those are, mm. and the, the picture with the, the Ali that posted with the, um, Kaaba. the Kaaba, the Rainbow Kaaba. Um, that went that yeah. went crazy this year, didn't yep. it? Like that was fun. This, that that, <laughs> that, that reserve that picture resurfaces ever, ever ever since we we made it and we posted it. Every it keeps coming back every once in a while. Mm. And the first two times that we posted it on Atheist Republic, and also the Allah his gay sign that I had. In, those are the most times in my life that I got death threats. Right? I mean, I it's not even comparable. To the time that I uh, burned the Quran, right? So I could tell you, like, I can. When it comes to burning the Quran, when I when I did that, the number of death threats that I got was under ten, okay. But when it comes to um, the first time that that the Allah is gay, the sorry, the Ka Rainbow Kaaba, the first time that I went viral, the police had to come to my place because of the number of terrorist threats and other threats that we were getting right like it was in the thousands and then the other time also with that law is gay uh, so I, when i went there by the way i made it clear in the video i don't know if you saw it in the video of my law is gay sign that the three reasons that i get for why i'm doing this is first to break taboos because if you think this is offensive if you think this is an insult basically you're saying being gay is something bad if i say allah is gay if you think that's an insult then you have some problem with being gay uh, and that was to break taboos to normalize it the second reason was to show them because i knew i was going to get a major reaction was to show the amount of homophobia that exists in the muslim community and also the third reason i think this is something people miss is to show to inspire people in Islamic countries, because a lot of I got I saw a lot of message in per, tweet, tweets in Persian f from Iran, people saying, "Wow, this guy gets this guy went outside in the streets and had a sign saying Allah is gay, and he didn't even get arrested. Like they couldn't yeah. believe that you could get away with something like that. Like that you, I'm I'm still alive after doing that. Like they're like, would they would it, they? I saw one girl posting like, would it? In response to that video saying is it possible one day that we live in a f such a free country that we get to do something like that like it that's it was a source of inspiration but the reason so notice what's the similarity the the rainbow kaaba has a g islam and gay in one place the allah is gay sign is also islam and gay this is the most sensitive thing to them more sensitive than drawing Muhammad, more sensitive than, and again, don't overdo it. If you make it cartoonish, like Muhammad having gay sex with a pig and stuff, that's not going to impact anybody. That's just so over the top that Muslims are going to be like, okay, you're just an idiot. But if it's subtle, if it's not overly aggressive, that is, that's going to hit a spot and that is going to get a reaction. And we want that reaction because we want to show that reaction to, the, to other people to see how big of a problem this is, right? And this is the we knew I meant Ali and I discussed this, and this is where the main point Ali was trying to get, get you to comment on um, is because we we knew from a very long time, and Sam Harris also predicted this, that this marriage between the left and Islam yeah. is not sustainable. This is going to end up in divorce because there are some red lines that the left has, and there's some red lines that Islam has, and the main red red line that both of these groups have is LGBT. Right, and not, neither of these groups are going to give up this. They're going to come give an inch to the other side when it comes to LGBT, or you know, Muslims are Islam is not going to accept LGBT, and L, uh, the left is not going to drop it. So, and this is why we think that gay rights should be the front in the front lines because this is the one thing that we could unite all sides 
of you know people with liberal values we could yeah. win people over from all sides against islam with lgbt rights this is the this is the you know rallying cry that we have to take against islam and so it's more what we what we what Elia and i are suggesting is that this is this now is more lgbt rights is now more than just asking for lgbt rights lgbt uh -huh. rights is actually the kryptonite of islam Mm -hmm. we, that's what we think. What do you? What do you yeah, think? it's a front, and that's. What, yeah, I, I also can I say one thing before you answer, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just for the, some, you know, we do have a lot of Muslim listeners, as we found recently. So the Muslim listeners who are listening to Armin talking about all of the stuff about Allah is gay and burning the Quran. I just want to. I know that when you hear it, it shocks you. But imagine, imagine if there was a book, right, that talked about Muslims the way the Quran talks about disbelievers, women, gays, and so on. Imagine that you take the Quran and everywhere it says anything about anybody burning in hell or the disbelievers, or, you know, killing them and all that, that word was Muslims. It, 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 people would go insane, mm. right? There would be riots on the streets. So it's just, you, you always have to keep that in perspective in terms of mm. how we talk about things. But anyway, Jimmy, go ahead. Yes, I, I think, you know, I'm quite humbled by, 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 often by the arguments that you lot, I guess I'm quite humbled by your intelligence actually if I'm quite honest uh, for both of you so I think often I've had a position uh, and so definitely a position I had was um, burning the Quran is going too far mm -hmm. yeah uh, and then I mean when you went ahead and burnt the Quran and then you were giving your uh, reasons for, for, for doing it actually uh, and I just thought if you're a woman in Iran who's under forced, you know, headscarf and you want to burn, you want to burn a Quran, literally more power to you. If you're a gay person who wants to burn the Quran, because actually you see that this this document and this book is really oppressive towards you, it makes absolute sense to do so. It makes mm -hmm. absolute sense to do so. It's, but I thought that that was a step too far. Mm. And I think this is one of the, the beautiful things about ex-Muslims is one of us is always ready to take that step. <laughs> like, <laughs> because, um, you know, you, you three years ago, having somebody walking around with a sign saying Allah is gay, mm. that was just mind-blowing. And I was in the room when my, my colleague Imad, he made that sign. And as he was making that sign, my blood froze. Ah. Oh. When I made another sign that said, fuck Islamic homophobia, and I thought, I'm going to color the fuck Islam in one color and the ik homophobia in a different color, mm -hmm. so that it looks like fuck Islam and then uh, ik homophobia after that. Right. When I did that, I was afraid. Like, I was afraid. When we all turned up for our first gay pride march, mm. I remember marching with one of my best mates. And when we looked back and I said, I remember saying to him, I was really scared to pick up those signs and 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 go and join the major procession because i didn't know how people were going to respond to us mm. and i think this is the thing about ex-muslims we're not like your little care bear activist we will push the boundaries right. so that the people who come behind us have a nice easy job like we make the world so easy for lgbt muslims it's so easy for them because of the activism but, but that there, there is also there is you know we love diversity right mm. so there's a lot of diversity within right. the, uh, the yeah well, of course okay armin i i do and i think that there's a lot of diversity within the ex-muslim community in the sense that for instance if you think at some point that okay burning a quran Right. I think it's completely justified for somebody, a woman who's forced to wear the hijab or who's being, you know, undergoing uh, FGM or, you know, or, or a gay person who's being about to be hung in Iran. You know, for them, it's it's perfectly and justified. All, all of those things. Yeah. I don't However, love that. But just for the record, I don't love diversity. I love diversity of opinion. That's Any what other? I'm, yeah. I'm okay. talking about that. I'm uh. talking about that as well. So um, I, I, I think it's good. Anyway, that's, that's a different topic. But... But what happens is you always have, as you said, there's always someone in the community who's willing to do it. I might think myself that I'm like, okay, for what I'm trying to do, the people I'm reaching out to, that may not be the best way to go about it. I think mm. there are other ways to go about it where I think you know you may have thought at some point too. But at the same time, when Armin does it or somebody else does it, I understand. I'm like, okay, they're coming from an experience. Or when, when Ayan Hirsi Ali made the submission movie with Theo Van Gogh with all those verses – 
Um, yeah, it was super blasphemous. It was actually as blasphemous mm -hmm. as burning a Quran, mm -hmm. right, or more. Um, because you know it was on the. Wait, are you suggesting that me with my experience is okay to burn a Quran, but other people know? no? No, I'm not saying that. No. I'm saying that uh, people who have, when people do it, and they have certain uh, things that impel them to do it, and they're in the ex-Muslim community. I I am happy for it. I I like seeing all of that stuff go about. I mean, it's not that. But I think. But, I think but, again, we have to be cautious here, like because, and I think this is what Armin is getting towards. Is actually Armin is neither an oppressed woman in Iran nor is he a gay in anywhere. Yeah, I'm um, not a victim. Despite, I'm yeah, not a victim. Armin, yeah. Armin, no, but you you also grew up in a place and a situation where you almost lost your life to this kind of ideology and the indoctrination. But even if that yeah. didn't happen, it's okay to burn the Quran. Of course, it's of okay course to, it is. Like you don't no, in have fact, to yeah. be. In fact, if, if actually I would go further than that, if somebody says that, okay, ex-Muslims, I can see why they're burning the Quran, but I don't see why other people would do it. If that argument becomes, if some people are no, making that, that no, wait, no, uh, let me, let okay. me finish this. Yeah, go ahead. If, I know that's not what you're saying. No, Ali. but I, I just want to clarify well, that. I know. I'm saying, okay. That's, you're not saying, Ali is not saying that, but if other people are, do start saying that, then it actually becomes important for non-ex-Muslims to start burning the Quran mm, to make the mm. point like, yeah, I don't actually, if some people get to do it, I also get to do it, right? But yeah. that, and anyway, anyway, even if you're, if you're a non-Muslim or if you're a Christian or whatever, the way the Quran talks about you anyway, mm. it's your, everyone's legitimately got a right to burn the Quran based on offense, if you ask mm. me. Like, there's nobody who isn't, uh, who is, is kind of safeguarded from being offended by it. Mm. So, what what um, did Muslims do? What did so many Muslims do when a book came out uh, exactly. that, that, uh, that made fun of their entire thing that actually did a lot less than the Quran does for, for mm. example, disbelievers? The way the Quran talks about disbelievers, right? The satanic verses... It, it wasn't nearly as bad. It didn't prescribe, it, it didn't say go out and kill Muslims. That's not something that the satanic verses did. But it was burned all over the world. Mm. And, and people but were okay I think with when I was Muslim, though, and when, if I look back honestly to when I was Muslim... We uh, have to do that. That's important. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm really clear that what my expectation was, was one rule for me and another rule for everybody else. Like, that's really bad to say, like, but when I look back, I think actually my holy book could say whatever it wanted about other people. It could say whatever, uh, uh, whatever inaccuracies uh, there was in their theology. It could say that their belief in God was false. It could say that atheists were going to burn in hell. But really, other people shouldn't say stuff like that about Muslims. But, but I wanted the Quran burning video that I want to see. Is I want to see something contextualized. If we want to actually talk uh, to Muslims about this or to everybody else, like did, I, I, did you see mine? Huh? No, no, yours was. Cont I, I want a contextualization. In, a, for instance, you sit there, you take a book like that was widely burned, like Satanic Verses, read the worst stuff out in it about uh, Muslims, and then take something like the Quran and then read the worst stuff about it and uh, in it about other groups, mm. and then talk about say these are the things. Now you're burning this one. And uh, what about this one? But, uh, our, but Ali, for many, many Muslims, that's not the, the satanic point, verses, yeah, the satanic verses should be banned because it's, it's criticizing Islam. But when Islam criticizes everybody else, that's the truth. So I, you actually, can't burn that's the truth. Why, that's no, the why point, I mean, I'd want that contextualization. No, the, to show that the main this context that needs to be to that. The main context that I think we should have been pointed should be pointed at is that it doesn't matter if this book is true or not. It's, I get to burn whatever I want. And the reason what the book I ne burned next to the Quran was not Salman Rushdie's, you know, the satanic verses, was my own book. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I burned the Quran next to my own book to be like, if, if, if burning the Quran is hate towards Muslims, then I'm right now burning my book right next to the Quran as well, the book that I wrote. So what does that mean? Does that mean I hate myself? Right? And uh, another thing is, uh, Ali makes another point that is very... Uh, good, uh, but also needs to be the difference should be also pointed out. Ali makes a point that you know dissent is uh, sunnah because Muhammad went and destroyed some idols of other people's religion. Okay, which is a very very good point, but with a very important difference. Okay, when Muhammad destroyed those idols in in Kaaba, though he didn't pay for those shit. That was not his. Okay, he was destroying other people's property. <laughs> okay, when I burned the Quran, that was my fucking Quran. I paid for that shit. It was my property and I got to do whatever I want with it, okay? So, 
That's the difference is that, that I burned my property and he destroyed other people's property. Uh, so the, the other There's no that really I had... the difference because the real difference is, from an Islamic perspective, uh, is that Muhammad was bringing humanity closer to God. You're taking humanity further away. And I think, let's not lose perspective on that. Sometimes I have to step back into my Muslim, my Muslim paradigm, and I'm like, what is going on here? How is this being viewed? No, 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 um, yeah, I, 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 completely understand, I completely understand the Muslim delusion of it, but I'm talking mm. about the, you know, the non-Muslim view yeah. of you know, looking at it, because a lot of people are like, oh, you're censoring, uh, or you're, taking, you're destroying other people's books, this is the non-Islamic argument that are trying to defend Islam. Mm. To them, I'm like, I didn't take anyone's book. This was my fucking book. Yeah. I didn't censor yeah, anybody. Sure. I didn't went and steal other people's Quran. They're like, ah, you can't read this. I'm going to burn it. This is my Quran. Okay? Everybody has still their Quran in their homes, and it's pretty safe there. Nobody's taking your mm. Quran away. Okay? So, guys, back to LGBT being the kryptonite of Islam. I okay, really yeah. like that analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and, and I think there's some, some validity there. I think, actually, when we look at you know, even LGBT and its impact on Christianity, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so, so religion and, and, and gay rights often come into this fiction in the same way that religion and women's rights often come into this fiction. But I do agree with everything that you said. However, mm -hmm. so I think for a lot of people, yeah, you're right. It's going, it is, it is the, it is the, it is the line, and to, to, to use the word intersectionality in a way that's probably not intended. This is the intersection between like, uh, you know, commitment towards human rights or commitment towards cultural relativism. Mm. And I think, I think for many people, it would be really clear as to where to align themselves mm. if it wasn't for the fear of being called a racist. Exactly. Mm. Yes. And that is what we really have to tackle. So there's a, 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 a sort of an activist group around these Birmingham protests within which I'm, uh, it's a Facebook group within which I'm in. And the cultural relativism of white people in this group leaves me astounded. Like, I'm like, if this was white people protesting with let's not teach children that gay couples exist, mm. the, 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 the volume in this group and the criticism in this group with which white people would be attacking those protests compared to because it's Pakistani people who are of Muslim, who are Muslim Pakistanis, who are waving signs saying, um, mm. you know, our children, our choice, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. The criticism is really quite muted compared to, uh, and that's just totally about the skin color and religion of those people and not wanting to be a, a racist. Also, I think genuinely, they think they're doing a good thing by holding back. Like they genuinely th feel like they're doing some kind of service mm. to, to brown people uh, by holding back on their critique. Uh, and I think that's really but absurd. They, they're, think... But they're not going to be able to ignore this for too long because it's becoming front and center. And we want it to become it front and center yeah. because I just do. like you said, like they, they're, they're trying to like, you know, have their cake and eat it too. Uh, but I think this more than anything else forces people to take a side. Like this, the, you can't just dance around this anymore. I think the more this comes, the, the LGBT rights, more than anything will force liberals to pick your side. And in more than anything, it will force liberals to take the anti-Islam position. You know, and and mm. to face the truth about uh, Islamic homophobia, because what they do is they, they hear from their neighbors and all of these like Qasim Rashids and everything that, uh, that no, no, Islam's all, you know, they embrace gays and LGBT and Ilhan Omar's dancing in the pride parade and all that. But then what happens is that, you know, when when you have these protests or when that GABA thing goes up and then you have 5,000 people complaining and sending out death threats uh, and, and you put those out there, right? and then when people are, they have to face it, they're like, holy shit, this mm. is real. Like there's only one Ilhan Omar marching in the pride parade, but Jesus Christ, this is like thousands of these motherfuckers, yeah, right? Yeah. So I... That, but that's... also the reaction to the reaction to Ilhan marching in the gay pride parade from other Muslims. Oh that's, yes, that was know, a lot. That, was, a, that was another thing. That, that was that bigger actually. Like, that was this is bigger. Exactly what we need. Yeah, yeah like we that's... need we need yeah. Ilhan marching in the gay pride parade. We need um, Linda Sassou saying, "Oh, big up to my LGB community," and then we see 
the real Islamic homophobia turn on <laughs> those people within their own community. That's right. <laughs> it's that's beautiful. Right. Like you couldn't, you couldn't plan this. Like that's, it's so that's why beautifully it's, scripted. Like right. you're it's turning so on so it. Cool. And that's why we need Ilhan. you, Jimmy. We need it's you. It's so to... powerful. It's they loved that... Ilhan until she marched in gay pride. They right. love Linda Sapsor until she speaks about gay rights. Then this is what this is what's going to impl- this is what also going to destroy mm. care from within. The Muslims yeah, that completely. are joining, the Muslims yeah. that are joining there, and are like, oh, we're leftist, LGBT rights, and care is like changing its identity. And Muslims are looking mm. like, what the hell is this care? Like, they're yeah. you know how many videos I watched about Muslims being anti care now because of mm. the uh, because yeah. of them getting closer to this leftist views. It's amazing. Yeah, same so with Linda Sassou. I've now seen side. videos about Linda yeah. Sassou not being a true true Muslim because she's pro gay rights. Um, yeah. I just want to say one thing about the gay rights protests that you do see in Birmingham. And that is how sanitized they are. So Muslims are getting savvy now, right? Like <laughs> you can't be you can't be coming out in the UK with you know the hadith says we have to kill gays. Yeah, they're getting like, prepared. You could never ever say that in the twenty first century mm-hmm. and expect people to treat you with any level of legitimacy. So their protests are really sanitized around things like our children, our choice, and uh, we are not homophobic. Like these are the things that they're chanting yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. But every now and then, <laughs> it slips out. <laughs> the veil slips, right? And you right. get a glimpse of the woman, woman was behind. made to serve yeah. man, like a, yeah. So yeah, so you had that guy who was like, uh, you know. God made man, and then he made woman to serve man, and and for man's pleasure, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And but then you had you, you know, another yeah. random standing with Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And then you had this other filming of 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 um, the protest, <laughs> and like it's like all of these men and then these women completely segregated from them. And the camera quickly goes past really fast so that yeah. the women aren't focused on too much. And there was there's numerous occasions in the Birmingham protest when you watch the protests happening, yeah. uh, and and people have come down. Either media have come down or gay activists. Um, Uh, have come down to interview them where a woman will start speaking to one of the people who are interviewing like doing the filming and then a man will come and physically (laughs) physically (laughs) take her be like auntie stop talking to him and then escort her you know in the most patriarchal misogynistic way possible like it slips up and we get to see what Islam is really you, about you, and what this culture is all about. Like As you said, you can't script this stuff. And that's why it's so the organic mm. happening of this and letting it just go is so powerful. Another mm. thing is, it, it's, uh, you know, you talk about the responses to the Ilhan Omar and Linda Sarsour uh, whenever they stand up for gay rights. This is actually an unint- one of the unintended pluses of the yeah. whole regressive left thing. You know, when they embraced... Uh, the Muslims and the Muslims are like, okay, now I'm going to go with the left. And if we're going to go with the left, uh, well, we got to stand up for the LGBT people. Yeah. So now, no, no, you know, I don't the, see that as a plus. I, so how, how you got to understand? I, because I'm saying this very cynical way. Be more liberal around it, gay rights. Of course, rights, it's a plus. You're going, Jimmy. The, so the anything fact that, that makes that, liberal, anything that makes gay gay people more liberal around gay rights, I usually think is a plus. Okay, the don't the, the reason why the, the, it's a plus in a different way that I think I'm, I'm looking at it from Ellie because I think what the way the reason why I think it might be a more negative than a, a positive in one sense is that by putting like let's say this is the uh, the poison of Islam. And you're just basically putting a fake mm. thin layer mm. of like, hey, we're LGBT friendly. And by <sighs> that thin layer of LGBT friendly, what you're doing is that you're c- making excuses for the whole poison to spread, which in the long run is uh, like if you bring more and more Islam somewhere, at the end of the day, it's going to become a less LGBT friendly area. No, and it's going to be, wait, no, let me make my point. But yeah, the way yeah. that I think it's, the, the way I think it is, a, that in that way, it's a negative. In the way that I think it's positive is that the more access we get to Muslims, I don't, you know, the more we're going to be able to just get, just knock Islam out of, uh, out of them. You know what I mean? Like, not just like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, we, I don't want to go to Muslims and be like, hey, you could be Muslim and LGBT friendly. I want to be like, no, look, Mus- Islam is anti-LGBT. Just just give it up. You know what I mean? Like, I want mm-hmm. to, you know, that's that's the battle. And I think the other one, the other one, like, hey, you could be Muslim and LGBT friendly. 
actually does more harm than good for the world and LGBT community. Mm -hmm. I think that, and that's a longer yeah, I, debate. I think there's a deeper process, and I sorry, I gotta say this in response. Let me explain how this works. The um, leftists embrace Muslims, okay? The Ilhan Omers and Linda Sarsour come, they're like, oh, we're now on the left now. Bernie is coming in campaigning, you know, he's supporting us, we're gonna support Bernie and all this stuff. We're on the left. Now that they're on the left, the left, the left has this sort of, uh, you know, gay, gay rights and, and LGBT rights agenda, right? So now they have to embrace that. Now when they embrace it, they go out and they tweet the videos of themselves at the Pride Parade. What happens in response to that? Islamic homophobia is exposed. Mm. When Islamic homophobia is exposed, right. then that now it brings everything to the surface. It puts them in an awkward situation. And it's a, that's what I mean about it being... Right, so you have to be very the, careful the, about what you're endorsing there because we're not endorsing... I'm not at least endorsing uh, telling Muslims that Islam can be gray friendly. And I think nobody here is. is no, 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 no. Nobody's yeah, saying that. I, I, Ali, I didn't say that's what you're saying, but yeah, I'm just yeah, saying yeah, you yeah. have to be so careful. Let's, let's if I we sell that, that as a positive. That. Yeah, okay, okay. I might actually be saying that. Let me just okay, check okay. what I am saying. So when we think about it in that way, so I um, my concern is really about how quickly we can stop gay life being threatened. Right. Yeah. And what I understand actually as an atheist, what is ideal is to have this whole globe to just accept that God doesn't exist and throw these books away. I'd yes. love for that to happen tomorrow. However, as somebody who's concerned more about the safety of gay people, and have, when I look at the progress of gay rights um, entwined with Catholicism and, and the Christian religion, what I understand is that that utopian ideal that I have is not going to happen swiftly and is ahistoric. Oh, so when I look great. at what happened with Christianity no. and I see that it saved more gay people by Christian people saying, actually, um, oh, look, it, Jesus loves the gays. Yeah, That's not how I'm, it okay, happened. I'm okay with, with, with people of Muslim heritage redefining and reforming so that gay people don't end up dead like that's my priority that's not like, how it happened though that's not okay we when i come i'm coming to london and i'm we're going to be talking for a long time okay. about this okay yeah. because if <laughs> here's the thing oh, okay wait. so <laughs> like, the, the main the main yeah. the main point is the safety of people okay but mm. it's the, the it's an inefficient way of achieving that with lies okay it's not it's not it's not um, logically, yeah. internally consistent. You're right, you're right, you're right. Come, I, and, and this is what I'm saying, is that actually there's this utopian perspective of actually, I don't want less nasty lies, I want no lies, right? Yeah, but, but you're um, both no, right. But, but no, also, no, 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 the thing oh, yeah, is you're, right. you're talking from the perspective of an atheist, so for somebody who is Muslim, for them that's truth, it's not lies. I'm not yeah, just, I, no, 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 let me make let me make this point, okay? I'm not just talking about being idealistic and all oh, the truth is matters, whatever the consequences. No, I'm also talking about the consequences. I'm talking about the reason why I, um, I'm talking about why the truth matters. It's not just because I'm, I have this uh, f fascination with the truth, whatever the, con you know, I, the truth is the most efficient way of achieving something. I'm not doing, the, I'm not going for the truth for the sake of going at the, the truth. The truth happens to be the most efficient way of getting results. OK, the 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 what when you feed people lies for short term consequence for, for short term results, you're getting that short term results at the cost of to uh, to long term progress. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, mm -hmm. it, well, short term I lies, I don't with any of lies that gives but. you short term good results is giving is giving you a major cost in the longer term progress mm -hmm. and you yeah. they, and it, this is exactly also what happened with Christian enlightenment but I'm not going to go into that because we have a lot of I, I, I can I can I say sorry I gotta I gotta just get my piece in here because and the reason that I said I think that you're both right and I'll, I'll give you this is why I support offshore drilling for oil okay oh it's a very unpopular position among my friends and people pretty much every one of them I support offshore drilling of oil is because I think that there are short-term solutions to things and they're long-term solutions but you don't have to do one at a time no right? yes, don't say that uh, uh, hold on it's my turn and also I solutions finish. one yeah. at a time solutions will appear the truth will appeal to some people's like yeah. yeah what and they will the, the, wait, wait wait so the truth will appeal to some people who feel like they have scope to step into that truth uh, for other people 
going to die. That's not the truth. It is false, and they won't even be able to have scope for listening for that. Let, let me wait. Let me just flesh out this point so you understand, Armin. You could absolutely respond after this. Yeah. Right. So what happens is that you don't have to lie about offshore drilling being a bad thing. You can say yes, it's a bad thing, but in order to bridge ourselves economically to a point where we can get full renewable energy, which is a good thing, right? And we can constantly talk about how that's a good thing. You know, we need this short-term bridge to it. Now, okay, when it comes to the Christian thing that you were talking about, Christian acceptance, the Christian acceptance of homosexuality did not happen with people in history who are saying, oh, we're reformers, we're going to reform, let's just make a half-half type thing. Yeah. No, it would actually happen because there were people who were saying, fuck Christianity, fuck mm -hmm. homophobia. They mm -hmm. were extremists. And then their efforts led to a middle ground that led to that sort of uh, a, a kind of a uh, hippie, pussified version of Christianity. Can I say but pussified? This is what I'm saying. People have, mm. You're affording people that space to have their pussified yeah. version of oh, religion. God, you don't have guys, to don't have to lie. No, can, not, guys, no, 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 guys, no, 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 this is such a misunderstanding of everything I'm saying, and I'm not going to get too much into it because okay. I don't want to make this a reform episode. <laughs> I just want to say that it's such a major straw man when people tell me like, oh, we're, why, why do you think we could do only one at a time or mm. we can do both? You, anybody is saying that has not been listening to anything I'm saying. I, of course, people could do two things at the same time. I've been saying my main point is not like, oh, you could only pick one. My main point is one is coming at the cost to the other. That's but it's my not. no no Ali. I'm not gonna tell. I'm not gonna get into the details. I have explained so many times why one of them is coming out to the cost of the other. But please stop saying to me that why can't we do both? Because my entire argument is that one of them is hurting the other one and i don't want you to now say oh it's not because i don't want to respond to okay, that no. because this will come going to become a reform episode we're not going to respond let's, let's yeah. just keep it but, to where it is. but please stop telling me that hey we we can do more than one at a time because my point is that one of them is this not that they're both you know we, we i never said people could do only one thing mm. i've been doing i do i'm doing 12 things right now at the same time okay in my life my main point is one of them is destructive. Okay, mm. that's my point. Anyways. Okay. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can now turn your volume back to normal. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. But Jimmy, I just want to say, yeah, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, yeah, yeah. I just want to say this, and, and I, do, I think this is related to what Armin was yelling about, but <laughs> also, um, but also not. So, because I, I don't want to get into the reformist argument. Oh. What I'm saying is this: is my commitment as an activist is around human rights. Yeah, and if somebody wants to take their religion and say, I, it's okay to be gay in this religion, and that's my human right, I support that human right. I don't agree, and I mean, you're right, so I've been on panels with next to gay Muslims, and I've been like, why on earth are you even trying to, to legitimize your existence through, through the text of some absurd ancient book when you could throw that away and define your own existence using the 21st century and whatever you decide to use yeah right. i don't get why you would do that but in terms of human rights i support your right to do that madness mm. yeah okay that's also by the way that's, that's, that's okay because every time i say like this is a bad reform is the shittiest idea ever to defeat us to fight against islam and it actually helps islam grow faster everybody with um, i know i'm not saying jimmy that's what you're saying but when people say oh but they have their right i also get a little bit triggered because i never said they don't have the right right telling people something is a bad idea is not the same thing as saying that you don't have the right to say those things i just want to make you're clarify right. that. Well, yeah, so no, i think and i think and, yeah. and i, I I know and, you're and not again, just that. to, I said, you know, just I know to you're reiterate that. that is actually, you know, so for, for me, my position is very much about, mm. you know, expose the absurdity of Islam. Let's have mm. conversations about why it's so hideous and how, how um, was it Boris Johnson said, how it held back the rest of the world, the Islamic world from, you know, progressing and all of that sort of stuff. I want to have conversations about how does Islam stagnate us? Yeah, I do. I really want to have those conversations. Oh, yeah. How so, is it absurd so. in terms of our human rights? But if somebody else wants to have that conversation about how LGBT friendly it is, you're right. I don't support that in terms of an argument, 
but I do support their right, and I think we're concurring on that. I mean, yeah, yeah. how could we not? Is is it, we, does, does yeah. it, whenever we say these things, is anybody thinking like we're supposed to? Like, what when people say like, "Oh, they have the right," did, are they thinking, imagining that we're advocating to go in and stop these people from talking or having a conference? Like, are we advocating people? Uh, is that like it? When people say like, "Oh, they have the right to say these things," as opposed to what? Like, has anybody in any of our groups suggested for us to go and get the government to shut down their conferences? Like, of course. Like, what the? No, heck? What are we even but responding to? But it's not the to? government. So I think I think for me, actually their conferences do try and get shut down by Muslims. So what I do is I find, and I think it's really interesting because I haven't seen the absurdity of this nuance until you've kind of brought it up from this position. So I'll find myself aligning with gay Muslims to support their gay iftar, which is being held in a church because no mosque will have them. The and the reason I'm doing that is you're right. It's actually because I'm doing that not because I could agree in their theology. I'm doing that to support their right, Omin, because yes, people are trying to stop them. Right. Muslim people I, are trying dude, to stop I them. would I would start defending a Nazi uh, white supremacist that just killed a Jew. I will start defending that guy if they're trying to execute him without an access to a lawyer or without due mm. process, okay? Yeah. I will even go to defend that guy, okay? I will defend fucking ISIS if they're killing, if, they, if they're captured and they don't, like, uh, yeah, you, you should kill so ISIS think, if, yeah, go. Wait, sorry, when we're taking it to this, this Wait, wait, I, that, that shouldn't be taken out of context, I just said reality. I defend ISIS. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think need, wait, just I taking need, it to these yeah. platitudes. Is Those kind are the of clips making, we're going to take out <laughs> of this. Uh, yeah, and... taking it to these platitudes is kind of losing the message. So you right. said, of course, nobody is saying that they shouldn't have the right. Nobody among what I'm us. Saying to, but among... what I'm saying to you is why I align myself to these reformists in the Muslim community is because actually everybody in the Muslim world is saying they shouldn't that's, have the right. Okay, but you should see what I'm saying. I, I mean, among our, among us, that's what yeah, I meant. Yeah. Of, yeah, yeah, of course the rights are, of course the rights are being uh, we're, challenged. We're, we're going in circle. I think both yeah, of yeah. you have made your point. Yeah, we're yeah. going in circle. So I, I want to move on to the next thing. And that's actually related to this. So, um, Jimmy, you were on, you talked about being on panels with other, uh, you know, LGBT Muslims, not, uh, not mm, just ex-Muslims. Mm. And uh, recently you were at some conference or some event uh, where you did engage with other um, uh, Muslim LGBT, and you came out with uh, at least what I saw from your posts was you came out with a very positive experience mm. of, uh, with your engagement with some of the people there. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> even though you disagreed with them, so so I first of all I kind of wanted you to talk about that a little bit and explain it. Mm. The other thing I wanted to say was. Is there any way that these groups can come aligned? Like, for instance, outside these Birmingham, Birmingham schools, if ex-Muslim LGBT and Muslim LGBT came together and said, yes, we exist. We want you guys to see us. We grew up just like you did. You know, we look like you. We have the same skin color as you. We all grew up praying and learning the kalama and all that. But hey, you know, we are here. We exist and we're, we're, we're LGBT couples. Is that something that could bring both the groups together? So yeah, yeah just I both think those so things. can can we uh, let's start with the second point first. So can we have more convergence of of LGBT Muslims and LGBT ex Muslims? Yeah, um, I think we definitely can. Uh, uh, and I'm really compassionate, actually. Although I have my moments, I'm really compassionate to their understanding because I know that when I saw the Council of Ex Muslims standing outside the Pakistani embassy eating sandwiches during Ramadan. When I saw that maybe like eight, nine, ten years ago, before I was an activist, I just thought, okay, I get that you're flipping ex-Muslims, guys, but why are you going down to people's embassies when Muslims are just trying to fast and you're eating in their faces? Like, you're just troublemakers. What are you doing this for, right? And then as my understanding of blasphemy laws and what people go through in Pakistan if they are choosing to eat developed, then my and, and my commitment to human rights became more universal rather than just about my identity politic groups, things started to change. And I think as we march in gay pride more and more, as more and more articles are written about us and then we challenge those articles, as more and more of us are on podcasts or, uh, and that discourse increases, as we invite more gay Muslims to come to panels and discuss with us, there is a shifting in the understanding. And so what we saw 
and to go back to your first point, was we had a guy called uh, Kakan, who's very active in the whole uh, Birmingham protests. He came to our panel, and then in the audience, um, Farhan Qureshi, he was, he's a, a, a LGBT um, Muslim activist as well, yeah? And so he was in the audience, and, and he, the latter of the two has definitely been quite hostile towards ex-Muslims, actually. Uh, and his position has always been that um, if you're seeking asylum for apostasy, you should just stay in your own country. You shouldn't come to the UK to try, and the UK shouldn't grant you a, a asylum based on your apostasy. You should form a grassroots movement back in Pakistan uh, and try to uh, petition and move for change there. And at the end of the conference, uh, Fahan sat down and spoke to uh, one of my uh, colleagues from CEMB and they had a conversation and my colleague was a, a, an asylum seeker who has got asylum based on apostasy. And, you know, he really kind of explained uh, what, what the difference was and why it was necessary and such. And then Fahan left the conference and did a Facebook post saying, I really understand ex-Muslims in a different uh, context now. Yes. And it's completely shifted my perspective. Asylum should be something that's protected. Uh, and given as a, a means of um, apostasy should be a reason for asylum. Also, and this is very big and bold of him to say, he said, I think perhaps when I was at odds with ex-Muslim, I was looking too much for appeasement and favoritism from the Muslim community. So you know that whole throw ex-Muslims under the bus and I look like a good Muslim to the rest mm. of the Muslim community. Mm. He really enunciated that in a Facebook post and then tagged us all in it. Nice. So there was some movement and convergence there and his position on ex-Muslims has definitely shifted but that only came, as Armin would say, by having dialogue with the people who we are in, always in disagreement with. And I always try and do this, I always try and connect with ex-Muslims, it's fucking exhausting. Um, connect with Muslims who are gay, it's really exhausting because because you have to wade through these layers of misunderstanding. Right. And we're going to do it together when but, we come to, come to London. Yeah. Completely but rather than just it. conversation, just sort of doing things together. Like, I, I mm. think it would be amazing if there was an, an event and CEMB and, you know, the, some of the gay Muslims groups, they, they got together and went out to these schools. And, you know, or, or, that's just an example. But... Um, yeah, they're not doing ready events for that yet. Huh? <laughs> they're, not, they're not ready for that yet. No, they, because they, another event... the, they, they only just came to our panels. Like, so going to a school together would be quite an interesting proposition. I'm not sure that they're they're really ready for that yet. Um, you guys can but, start it. You know, we can start, start it. it. We can totally start it. Um, yeah. So I think the other thing, Kakan was on the panel with us. Uh, uh, and what was quite interesting was we had that conversation about where I said, listen, I don't... Um, agree with the need to redefine Islam to accept homosexuality. I think that's absolutely ludicrous. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do that as a gay Muslim, I'll support your right to do so and craft a space for you. And I think what really came out, which was quite interesting from the gay Muslims was, I don't want to be an ex-Muslim. That came up a couple of times. Stop it. I don't want to be an ex-Muslim. Uh, and so we responded to that and said, actually, no one is asking you to be an ex-Muslim. No one is saying that you should be an ex-Muslim. But just like how you Muslims get excited when someone converts into the faith we, because they think it's the best ideology. Similarly, we do think that this is a, a, a better ideology than Islam. However, no one's asking you to do that. Don't do it if you don't want to. But what we are saying is, one, stop throwing us under the bus of Islamists to make yourself look like a better Muslim. And two, be committed to all human rights, including blasphemy. Because you can't march in a gay pride march saying that you're committed to human rights and then saying your sign is offensive because it blasphemes. When your existence as a gay Muslim is blasphemy it's much to more so many blasphemy. other Muslims. Yeah. Let me, can, I, can, I, can I respond to what you're just saying? A lot of people think and when we say we have to fight Islam and you know, they think like becoming an ex-Muslim is the only answer and nothing else is accepted and mm. they completely misunderstand what what we mean by fighting Islam when we're saying this because defeating Islam is not just a battle between ex-Muslims and Muslims and making more Muslims ex-Muslims defeating Islam is also a battle within each individual okay 
you could be a Muslim that is less influenced by Islam and more influenced by other things. A lot of people when they say like, oh, but this Muslim is gay friendly and that Muslim is like that. What they're treating Muslims like is they're treating them as Muslims and nothing but Muslims. Like they, they, they feel like, okay, this is a person, they're like a robot and you just insert some Islamic code in it and just follow it. What they don't understand is just, just like other people, Muslims are influenced by many things. Many things. Islam is just one of the many hundreds or thousands of things that are that is influencing a Muslim. Muslims are influenced by Islam. They're influenced by the podcasts they listen to, by the YouTube videos they watch, by the books they read, by the shows they watch, by their parents, by their friends. By okay? secular culture. By secular yeah. culture. And when you're fighting Islam, not just in a society, but within an individual. So let's say like, I'm holding a box for the people that are just listening. Like, this is a Muslim. And you, you have a lot of things. This is a this is like a box that a lot of things is just flowing into this box a lot of ideas right when you're fighting Islam is that you're just diluting the influence of Islam and this one individual even if they remain Muslim right I what I'm saying is that somebody could still be Muslim and less influenced by Islam what I'm what I'm suggest what I'm against is that I'm this Islam influence is always a negative influence. I'm su I'm I'm suggesting not to understand that we could reduce the influence of Islam in one person, but always recognize that this Islam influence is always a negative. Less of it is better. Somebody could be LGBT friendly. Somebody could be supporting secularism. Somebody could be supporting women rights. Somebody could be supporting democracy, freedom, and still a Muslim because they're less influenced by Islam. Right? Don't ever suggest that this Islam influence, we could have a different brand of Islam. No, that Islam influence is always negative. So we're fighting Islam. The battle is within every individual, not within, not just within a society. So I've never thought about myself as fighting Islam, actually. That's well, not I something I've, I've ever thought about yeah. as what I'm doing. I've thought about myself fighting for universal human rights. Same thing. Yeah, I'm kind uh, of. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's the same thing. <laughs> One of them sounds better, I think. But um, yeah, I, do, I can see the, the similarities there. But like, really, when I think about, because I don't care whether you're Chinese people, uh, Chinese government putting uh, Muslims into concentration camps. That's not me fighting Islam. That's me fighting for universal human it's rights. It's the same right? thing. Then. If you and, want, if you uh, if if you're fighting for, if anybody that wants to fight for universal human rights has to fight against Islam. Fight Islam. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one There's thing some that, truth to that statement. One that would thing, make a beautiful quote with your face in the background. <laughs> <laughs> well, thing, be, I uh, mean, and you could, you could broaden it. I mean, you'd, you'd have to fight. Like, it would be religion, really. I don't want to broaden oh, yeah, it. Because nobody, really, no, I don't want to broaden it. Which is it what Atheist Republic does. But that's I don't like, want to broaden it because people Muslims, don't deny the other You just did a not all Muslims on Islam there. Like, yeah. I don't want to yeah. broaden it to all religion because nobody gives a shit when you say that about yeah. religion. People are just sensitive totally. when we talk about Islam. So I want to say specific. And the other thing is that we are from, the, the reason we talk about it is because we are from Muslim backgrounds. E but even yeah. if I wasn't, even if I wasn't from a Muslim background, I yeah. think I would still focus on Islam. Some, some, sometimes on purpose because people don't have a reaction that, that big of a reaction to when you talk. Yeah. About so Muslim. I was on a panel for Humanist UK. They did their annual conference a couple of months ago, and they the Friday is their LGBT panel uh, um, event, and then it goes into the the, 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 the more wider event on the Saturday and the Sunday. It was a beautiful event, right? So I can only make the Saturday I was on this panel and it was about uh, bigotry and homophobia and what are the causes of it. And so obviously I, I, I came to it from the perspective of Islamic homophobia and the audience, I would say was 90% white people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, and on the panel there was four of us, so it was me and I think you know Leah Salim. She she's been on your show before, I think. Uh, that lady who who's done that book called um, what was it called again? Leaving Faith Behind, right? So her and I were on the panel, and then two 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 white ladies were on the panel as well. And I was talking about Islamic homophobia and. Then I cited, you know, the statistics from the latest survey about 52% of British Muslims think that homosexuality should be criminalised. 47% think that um, gay people shouldn't be teachers. 
and then I kind of drew an alignment of it to misogyny. Where is this? Muslims in, in where? In the UK. Muslims in the UK. So 52% said uh, homosexuality should be criminalized. 47% said that gay people shouldn't be teachers. And then along with fundamentalism everywhere is always misogyny. So 39% who were surveyed said uh, women should be obedient. Wait, so wives, there's a 5%? Wives should be obedient. So wait, so 5% of Muslims think that criminals can be teachers? No, no, no. Let me give you those stats again. <laughs> no, so, no. So you said 52% say it should be yeah, criminal. Yeah, but Armin, it's, not, it's overlapping, right? Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Those are two different questions on the survey. So one right. question was, should homosexuality be criminal? Yeah, right. criminalized. And 52% said, yes, it should. Yeah. 18% yeah. said, no, it shouldn't. Right. And then the rest of the percentage that's missing were right. either. But I don't, you also I don't said know, forty-seven sure. of them say that they mm, that they shouldn't be teachers, right? So the next question was: Is it okay for a gay person to be? A All right. Teacher? So the difference between the forty-seven and fifty-two means that around five percent of Muslims think that criminals should be is it is okay for criminals to be teachers. <sighs> I don't think it works like that, but I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Um, yeah, and so then 39% said that women should be obedient to their husbands, like wives should be obedient to their husbands, because obviously, uh, we know, you know, those people who grew up in these communities, we know, we know that we're not shocked by these statistics. We're like, oh, that's um, exactly what you'd kind of expect it to be. And I thought 18% actually was quite high of people saying, Muslim people saying it shouldn't be criminalized. I was like quite surprised and optimistic by that number. Yeah. But when Actually, I did in the, in that, the U.S., uh, fifty-two percent, over fifty-two percent of the Muslims in the U.S. now support gay marriage. Yeah, they support it, same-sex it, marriage. So there's also a little, there's a big difference okay. in uh, these okay, communities but, worldwide. But this is. But my point was this. My point was this was when I was on that panel and I gave these statistics after I finished speaking. Some white lady in the audience. Um, I was going to say, God bless her soul. Like she, uh, <laughs> she, she tries to do it. Not all Muslims on me, right? Uh, and I'm like, I, I, and then my colleague on the panel saw I was going to respond and just kind of touched my arm. I was like, should me just just be quiet? My other ex-Muslim colleague, and because I was like, did she just do it? Not all Muslims on me. When I'm <laughs> literally giving you the statistics that show it's not all Muslims. Yeah, it's just <laughs> most. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I thought I was very, like you can't try to not all Muslims when I'm telling you it's not all Muslims. It's yeah, just it's, most Muslims. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> it, it was absurd, and so I just taking it back to Armin's point, where even if I wasn't an ex-Muslim, Islam is what we need to talk about, right? Because yeah. you know, and going back to this this intersection between cultural relativism and and uh, gay rights or, of Muslim heritage is actually there's so many white people who, you know, this was just a reaction. She felt like she had to defend Muslim people mm. against what I was saying when I was giving her black and white data. Right. And, and her response to that was not all Muslims. It was like... Okay, but talking about black and white data, and this is a reason because uh, I, I this is something if I don't talk about and I don't get a reaction on, I'm going to hate myself because this is something mm. that we I mentioned that we have to talk about it in this episode when we started and we haven't talked about it yet because I don't think a lot of people understand the examples that we're giving about what happens in but, but the 52 percent or the examples of you gave of some homophobic, you know, um, reactions that slip through in the UK or it happens in you know in other places in Europe or Australia Canada United States New Zealand these are nothing compared to the homophobia that I mean I think a lot of people don't understand people are like oh yeah Muslim community homophobia is high we uh, we know this but I really don't think most people understand w the level and I don't even think they can even uh, they have the capacity to even imagine what we're dealing here. We're um. talking like there's an Arabic hashtag that went trending. Like this is went trending among, um, on Twitter, uh, which is which was was translated on on ways to kill gay people, right? The ways to kill gay people, and <sighs> the amount of yeah. And the image, like this, this was huge. Like the the amount, the the ways that 
the Arabs were imagining and fantasizing about. And this is something that is not new, right? It's, Twitter is new, and you can see all the different fantasies that these people had about killing Muslims. And these are hundreds of thousands of people. But this is something I was used to, like the way people just imagine and just think about the ways that they would like to kill gay people. All right? I'm not talking about ISIS, okay? I'm not talking about jihadists. I'm talking about just regular young Muslims in Islamic countries agreeing that Muslims shouldn't just be killed. They should make, they should die a slow, painful death. The numbers that you mentioned was from the UK. If you look at these numbers from Islamic countries, they're That's, not yeah. they're not just a majority. They're the vast majority. We're like mm. we're talking 80, 90 percent, sometimes close to a hundred percent of people accepting pe that gay people should be killed. When the Orlando shooting happened, when the Muslims, uh, when the Muslim ca guy killed uh, a whole bunch of gay people in the, in Orlando, the the Orlando hashtag, the Arabic version of it, was being used, and a lot of people were. This, this, the celebration of the killing uh, of these gay people among Muslim community was beyond just a celebration. People were s wishing that they could just kiss this man's hand before he died, they, they, like before he, you know, before it all happened. Like they could, they were saying that they, they were. There were so many thousands of examples of people saying they would wish they were there just to be able to see these gay people the screaming pain there were examples of people saying that I, they would wish they could just see these people's flesh fly in the sky when they when the shootings were happening so many so many people were wishing that they could just wish that there was video that they could just experience these disgusting people being killed by by this muslim and they were they saw they saw this person as a hero when 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 you know so there's so many examples of people uh, in Islamic countries that were raped, children that were raped by by you know gay by by a gay man or something, right? And the child was executed. The victim of their rape was executed for being in a homosexual relationship. We have exactly and people when we say executed, where I come from in Iran, right? When we then they arrest gay people and again a lot of people misunderstand people think iran is tolerant because they accept transgender you have you have you have to understand iran when they have transgender surgery this is forced transgender surgery because your choice when you when if somebody find out if you're gay your choice is between execution and ch or changing your uh, gender even though you don't have gender dysphoria okay you're just yeah. gay you're you're not you're not trans but you have to go through surgery or else you get executed and the people that have been executed more than three thousand people that we only know about because a lot of these people are not even recorded that have been hanged in iran for being gay we when we say hanged this is not the humane like the quote-unquote humane way where they hang people where they drop you they, you know even in the wild wild west when they hang people or where and the places where they hang people they drop you at your neck breaks and you just die right away the way they hang gay people and everyone else in iran they just slowly lift you on your neck some of these people took hours to die some of these people chewed on their own tongue from the pressure and the the pain that they were experiencing while slowly dying that's how they hang people in iran okay this this is we're talking the level of homophobia we're talking when we say islamic countries people are like oh yeah islamic countries we're talking about more than 50 countries in the world when we're talking about muslim majority countries Okay, this is what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that was my rant. Yeah, I mean, I'm just assessing what's going on in my body um, at the moment, and I feel really sad. Like there's parts of what you were talking that just made me want to start crying, um, and and I think that when we have white liberals. And it's always some fucking middle class Pakistani with bleached teeth and short shorts minimizing that struggle that people of Muslim heritage go through by throwing out terms like racism and Islamophobia when what we're challenging is actually Islamic homophobia. 
and they don't understand that what they're actually doing is perpetuating death. Right. Like yeah. they just don't get it. So when this woman is trying to not all Muslims me, when I'm talking about statistical data on Islamic homophobia, you think you're rushing to the defense of, of Muslim people, but actually what you're doing is just perpetuating persecution and death because you're stifling a conversation from taking place. And I mean, when you talk about the different ways about how gay people are killed, it's important to note that that's a scholastic debate as well. Like the way that we should kill gay people, is it execution, is it hanging, is it stoning? This is a theological conversation. Hmm. Right. It's not just, so when, when you know, because people will be listening to you like, what's that got to do with Islam? No, even the way that we kill gay people, even the method, whether you sever his head or whether you hang him for a rope or whether you put him in the middle of a circle for people to throw stones at. Or even throw them off a dialogue, building. Yeah, mm -hmm. or throw them off a building. Even that dialogue is entrenched within our religion. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and one other thing that, that came to mind, Omin, when you were saying that was like lately I've been hit with this argument of Amnesty International said, uh, and I haven't seen it, someone just hit me with this social media uh, argument that, oh, well, recently in the last 20 years, there haven't been any exec state executions of gay people by. Uh, Islamic states but as long as those laws exist mm. um, that's one problematic because if we had a state that said oh if you see Muslim people being Muslim in public execute them if you have four male witnesses or whatever right four yeah. witnesses we wouldn't say well no state has executed a Muslim we'd say that law in itself is problematic yeah and we understand how legislation shapes community uh, attitudes so just by having a law that says gay people should be executed right this encourages mob justice so as you're talking about the state executions i mean i'm aware of other times where gay men have been held down uh, in pakistan by the mob and they've got a branch from a tree tree and raped him with the branch from the tree right to teach him and, and make an example of him to the community. Right. And okay, and not just the law, the attitude. Even if a single gay person, and like let's say the uh, Iran so far more than 3,000 people, Saudi Arabia, many other people, but let's say they all stop, okay? Let's say even if it's, uh, the, even if it's on the law and they all stop executing people. What you have to understand is that th this is not just law. This is law backed up by popular support right and the, you know and and the mentality is even even if the law is not there even if you get rid of the law the people want this the people fast you know the people fantasize about this mm -hmm. okay the people are disgusted about anything lgbt related and it's the source of this discussion is is is, is islam it's their religion right and we have we have also to bring it back to the the UK, you know, I remember Peter Tatchell being on a talk saying that they received a call at the Peter Tatchell Foundation from a girl who said her family had found out that her brother was gay in the UK mm. and they'd taken him to Pakistan and killed him there right. and then buried, buried him in Pakistan. Yeah. So even if you're not in one of those countries, diaspora communities can enact that same vengeance right. in, in that way by taking you back to that country. And also, um, I mean, like we've had incidents where, you know, like if you look at Naz and Matt Foundation, where Naz was Muslim and he killed himself because his family were uh, from an Islamic culture. And we had another couple where it was a Muslim guy with a white guy, and more latterly they've been uh, showing up on Facebook posts where he killed himself. The Muslim guy, the, the guy from Muslim Heritage, killed himself yeah. because his family wouldn't accept him. So even if there isn't a law in place, 
a law back in our country of origin still shapes the diaspora community in the new country that they're in. Mm. Like thinking that those two things are divorced from each other isn't accurate. Cultures <laughs> in Pakistan shape like a, 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 a legislation and Islamic conversations in Pakistan right. completely shape the discourse in the UK of attitudes towards gay people over here as well. Yeah, by, and by the way, I, I think that, you know, co going back to the criticism you get that why do you talk about it here? Why don't you go protest in Saudi Arabia? Mm -hmm. This is exactly why. Because they can't do it. But when you do it here, right, you're speaking up. You're giving a mm -hmm. face right, and a picture of, of um, ex-Muslim or, you know, Muslim gay people who are out and we're speaking, and this is this is the most important thing. You know, when you talk about is it why is it so hard for people to imagine what it's like in the Islamic world? I, I actually I'm I'm older than both of you, so I, I don't think it should be that hard for people here to imagine because I mean I was just watching the Eddie Murphy Delirious special mm -hmm. yesterday, right? The stand up comic uh, special from the eighties. And you know, the, the whole thing was homophobic. When I was a kid mm -hmm. we used to call each other faggot and stuff in school all the time. Oh all Ellie, the time. It was, YouTube is gonna destroy it. Don't say that. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, I mean, Owning your problems is a good thing. Owning right. your, your... Yeah, so, your well, I mean, it's not... Uh, this is something that everybody did. It was pervasive. So that culture of everybody hating gay people or blaming them all for AIDS is something I remember when I was a conscious human being. So mm -hmm. why would people here think that, okay, suddenly, you know, just because we have fixed... And we fixed it here very recently. I mean, Hillary Clinton and Obama were both against same-sex marriage until just a few years ago. The Democrats were against it until just a few years ago. This is These are very recent developments. So why would we think that it's, since we have been here so recently that everybody over there has somehow has this great tolerance for it? Of course they don't. But what helps it, what helps it, helped it here was people coming out of the closet, putting a face to it, saying that, okay, Ellen, you know, she came out, and then, and then, you know, the, the movie Philadelphia. Tom Hanks, you know, he made that movie. Where right? that was a very powerful movie. Or you had people, you know, all of these TV shows like Will and Grace and so on. People's kids, people's employees, people's you know neighbors. When they all started coming out, it humanized it. And when ex-Muslims and Muslim LGBT or LGBT of Muslim heritage, as this thing is called, when they come out and they put a face to it, there are kids because of the internet. In all around the world, in Saudi Arabia, the kids were scared of being hanged in Iran. They're seeing your faces, and they're seeing this guy looks like me, and you know he grew up like I did, and and he is oh so he's out there speaking, and and I agree with it. So mm. you know this can happen, and it humanizes it. And that's why it's so powerful. That's why you don't you're not supposed to go to Iran and protest. You're supposed to do it at mm. a place where you can because the visibility is still worldwide, right? Okay. Completely yeah. anything. The world is increasingly shrinking. So, actually, the activism that you do in London Pride reaches. Well, actually, you saw just with your rainbow uh, carpet everywhere. You did yeah. that from the comfort of your own home. It literally yeah. reached all around the Muslim world, right? So, I think I think this idea that you should go and protest in Saudi for gay rights is just absurd. But on the level of absurdity, I'd just like to gift you this. And I'm wondering what your response will be. Ooh, I, I like gifts. It. Yeah. So, you know, you must, you probably have had this gift of an argument before, which is when you're criticizing Islam, yeah, what do you expect Muslims to do? Because we love Islam and the Prophet more than we love our mum and dad. And if I criticized your mum and dad, you'd be angry too. <laughs> I have, a good, I have a response to that. I have, That's my a, gift to I have, you. A, I have a response please. to that. No, I have, can, I, have a can, I go that. First? can I go first? Yes, please do. Please okay. do. So the response, the response that I usually give is like, okay, yeah, you're, this is so, such a common <laughs> response. It's so, so annoying. People are like, look, look if I insult your mother, you would be, you would be off offended. So when, I, when you criticize Muhammad, you know, Muhammad is closer to, uh, to us than our mother. So why would you do that to us? I, my response is like, okay. If I insult your mother just for the sake of um, making you uncomfortable or annoying you, then I'm an asshole, right? Um, and you, sh you know, and I, get, I have the right to do it, but I'm an asshole if that's my entire goal. But let's say if your mother is a politician and she's trying to pass some laws, and I don't like what she's doing, and I'm trying to make it, you know, uh, 
uh, comedy about her and make fun of her, uh, make fun of her policies. You know, it's not just your mom anymore. She's just somebody that is saying things that is influencing other people's lives, right? So that's a, in that situation, you know, it's more you getting offended and you getting uncomfortable by seeing these cartoons against your mom is unfortunate. But there's a bigger, more important thing that is happening here, right? We are attacking your mom's um, political position. Your mom is in a position of influence and power, and she's fair game. I mean, she's fair game no, no matter what when it comes to insulting, but it, now I'm not a dick for doing it. But now let's go a step further. Now let's say if your mother is saying, like, okay, I saw some cartoons against me, and I'm going to now try to pass a law for people not to be able to make fun of me anymore. Now, now there's a new level. Uh, now we reached a position that it becomes a, not only a good idea, but a responsibility, I think, for all of us to start making cartoons and jokes about your mother. Okay? Again, sorry that you're getting offended about it, but like, we, we, if she tries to make, draw a line and tell us not to cross it, and make, trying to enforce, come up with ways to enforce this not, for us not to be able to cross it, then we really have to cross it. So this scenario is more similar to what we're doing with Islam than just your mom, okay? That's my response to it. Yeah. Agreed. So, I feel like you covered it all. Yeah, <laughs> my my response is actually very similar, but I, I, I don't even think we have to I explain it that much. Just The idea is just I would just say, go and ask Chelsea Clinton or Baron Trump that question. You know, oh. that, why is it okay? Mm. It's, it's simple because they have to deal with it all the time and they understand why it's okay. You know, if you're if your father, like I'm not insulting your father just because it, it was completely unknown, who I don't know. Um, the, Muhammad is a public figure. That ideology, is a, it's a public ideology. That it affects mm. laws, it affects policy. Yeah. We can criticize Bill Clinton. We can criticize Napoleon. We can criticize Hitler. We can cl criticize whoever we want to. Um, because they're public fi figures and they have an impact on people's lives. And the same way, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm sure that Chelsea Clinton's mother is very, very close to her heart and it really hurts her when people criticize her mother, but she's had to deal with it and justifiably so. Yeah. Right? And father, by the way. I mean, she has a, mm -hmm. It sucks for her on both sides. Yeah. yeah so. um, do, you, do you want to get to patron questions now? We have a lot of uh, go for it, go for it. very, very uh, involved uh, people here. So uh, let's just go through some of that now. So uh, first of all, Sophia Johnson is saying thank you. She really appreciates you. She's a huge fan of yours. Mm -hmm. um, and other people also chiming in and saying that they heard Sophia, like Halima uh, Salat, who was on the show recently. Yeah, yeah hey, and she, she's... Uh, She's talking I, about it's how... It's really sweet that our guests are also our patron, uh, patrons. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, so, you know, she's saying that she also heard the episode with Sophia and, and she absolutely loved it, just like you did, Jimmy. Um, so, you know, she's uh, making that comment. Um, and then I'm trying to get into questions. Uh, Halima is saying, uh, my question is, how do we actually constantly navigate the whole human beings versus ideology thing? Like the yeah, idea by, that you by know, befriending the people that we don't uh, but you don't agree with, mm. yeah, yeah, definitely. and publicly and think, showing that, yeah. And, my my and, view is repetition. I think we need to say it every time. I even though it's very obvious to us because we've been saying it for a long time, um, it is because when people hear this, it really turns a light bulb on in their head. In my experience, you know, for many years, whenever I've said it, it really, really, they're like, oh, I get it now. Uh, majority of cases. So I, I think that we need to repeat it as much as yes, people are not aware of how obvious it is. And I think also for me, it's more than anything, it's about maintaining consistency, isn't it? So if you're fighting for universal human rights, that means standing for Muslims when China is rounding them up. Yes. Yeah. And that means standing for a straight white man when he doesn't get the job at the Metro Metropolitan Police Force. Mm -hmm. When people see that you're consistently standing for all rights for everybody, then there's no doubt that you're standing for rights and right. humanity. So actually, that's perfect because so there, there's two parts. Um, but I think demonstration help usually works better than actually just saying things. So one thing we could do is find people that we are fundamentally in disagreement with other mm -hmm. than positions that are anti, you know, um, anti-humanist. Like if somebody's okay, when I say 
befriending people that we disagree with, there are some positions that is more than just an opinion. There are some positions that shows that you're just an evil p- human being. Like, I'm not going to befriend somebody like, hey, my opinion is that it's enjoyed to torture gay people and just watch it as entertainment. I'm like, oh, Armin, that's just an opinion. Are you going to befriend that guy? No, okay? This is not, this is, this is more about this person than just an opinion, okay? This is, says more about the the you know they're a shitty person human being okay i'm i'm gonna not befriend shitty human human so so to be more consistent befriending people that you have passionate disagreements with as long as they are not shitty human beings but also standing against people what what jimmy said standing against people that you have agreements with philosophical Mm. agreements with Mm. But they're shitty human beings, <laughs> right? Yeah. And this is something that I, what, you, what Jimmy said is something that we try to do with our own atheist, not just atheist community, with our own atheist republic community. We constantly, every time we see an attack on Muslims or killing of Muslims or, you know, mistreating Muslims, there's somebody within the atheist republic community. There's that one guy that's like, oh, this is great. I love it, right? And we 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 go in and we make sure that we call them out. Like we highlight them. Yeah. We don't sh- we don't hide it. We don't shy away from it. We go like, oh, look at the cancer that is growing on growing within our own community. This is a problem. I'm calling that out, even if yeah. we agree with that person about Islam. Right? Yeah, you gotta also just be a be a good person, man. Be a good, kind yeah. human being, and and that's that's the thing. There's this uh, stereotype of atheist of. There's a stereotype of ex-Muslims. There's a stereotype of gay people, you know. And when people meet them and they realize, wow, you know, you're a nice, decent human being who respects people, you know, you don't even though you talk about things. I, I think that that really, really goes a long way. Um, I've I noticed think, in my experience. I think also just having compassion for learning and affording space for learning. You know, this is I'm really clear that uh, when you had me on this podcast a year ago, right? Um, my position has shifted on many things. My uh, knowledge has shifted on many things and my learning has developed right from being in this arena and I think giving people space to grow they might not agree with you now they might have a position that's different but cutting somebody off because you disagree or not conversing with them because you their position is opposed to yours is not helping anything mm-hmm. so by engaging them in dialogue and having compassion Absolutely. for them to change but also accepting that everybody won't agree with you i think mm-hmm. there has to be this element of compassion in that um, allowing for diversity yeah, yeah. of opinion and also for just for people to grow i'm astonished at how much the ex-muslim movement has mm-hmm. made me grow in terms of my ideas right. and uh, my understanding of rights and uh, humanity Okay. Yeah. No, that's great. Okay. Let's let's move on. Um, we're gonna we have about fifteen minutes. We're gonna try to get as many of these in as possible. If we can't get to it, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, Sophia Johnson, right? So I thought we should give that priority since she's been such a topic of conversation here. Um, so she's talking about YouTube could possibly be moving out of the UK because the UK government might impose censorship laws about hate speech. I I didn't know about that, but um, I guess the the second part of the question is how would ex-Muslims be impacted? Are social media platforms still banning ex-Muslims for Islamophobia? Mm. I find the concept of hate speech complicated and worrying. Uh, any thoughts? So, uh, so that's a, that's a good question. What, what are we doing about? We heard about the apostate uh, prophet. Uh, we've heard about Hamid bin Hamid Abdul Samad. Like of all people, like you know, he was banned. Um, his YouTube channel was taken down. So, mm. so this is a problem. It's a risk for everybody. I know Abdullah Samir, Abdullah Gandal are banned almost every month. Alishba, my wife, is yeah. banned like all the time. So. Armin is too. So, what do we do? Yeah, I think my banning has kind of chilled out a bit. I don't know if that's because I've been posting less, though. Uh, probably there's a correlation there. Um, mm. But I think whatever the media mechanisms that are available to us is we continue to utilize them, right? So, if YouTube does ban us, we all move. We move to whatever platform we move to and we carry on um, our, our, our It's hard there. to transfer all the people, it's almost impossible. I know, I know. But I, I, yeah. I feel like if we were a community that wasn't, um, that was, that was uh, put off by hard things, we probably wouldn't be standing in right. a position to itself. Yeah. I, I have so, a very... I have a solution yeah. to this as well. Yeah. Go yeah. for it. I don't have a solution, but I have a very important thing to say on this, but Armin, go ahead. 
Well, this is something that I haven't been able to do because there's so many. This is why it's important for you guys right now to support the show if you're not a patron right now, okay? Because so I could focus on doing this. So I get our uh, uh, secular jihadists a newsletter because newsletter right now, Atheist Republic has a newsletter, but it's very, because there's so many people there, it's mm. very expensive. Um, but we need a, a newsletter for sec social, uh, for social, uh, secular jihadists because that's the one thing that they can't get to okay and um we need to like get all you know if you have a good newsletter list and people subscribe to your newsletter wherever you're removed from you tell your newsletter people to you know and when you have a newsletter w with somebody like make sure you back up all the emails on your hard drive so even if the people that you're doing the newsletter with even if they ban you you just have those emails right just um we, we, we're going to start a uh, secular jihadist newsletter. We're going to eventually, once we can afford doing that, again, become a patron today. Um, and we're going to get everybody to start subscribing to that. And the good thing about that is, first of all, we, every time we have a video or an episode, we let everybody know, so in case somebody misses it. But also, if we get banned from YouTube, if our podcast gets banned, if our website gets removed, if our Twitter gets removed, if our Facebook gets removed, as long as people are subscribed to our newsletter, we tell them, hey, people, now we're over here. And then, you know, that's the most efficient way of transferring people from one, me me uh, one media mm. to another. Yeah. I think the only question over here is that uh, one of the big advantages of these platforms is reaching out to new people, right? So that's also something that potentially you could do with the newsletter, but that, that's, that's a problem you have to solve for because it's, mm. you know, how do you, how do you get new people who stumble onto it because of searches? So... You know, it might. This is a. It's a problematic issue, and this is this is an issue. And I, there are a lot of people. I, it's very. I'm very clear about the fact that mm. I don't like people like Alex Jones or Tommy Robinson. But when they do get banned, I stand up. I don't think yeah. that they should be taken off the platform. Um, but and I, I don't like it. I don't think there should be any legal things because these are obviously private corporations. But that's a separate issue. Mm. I think that um, you know how the Beatles and Bob Dylan when they wanted to sing about drugs. And they couldn't overtly say it. They came up with Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds for LSD. Came up with, with a little help from my friends. They got creative within the restrictions. I think absolutely we should move to other platforms where we can have more open conversations. But I think we should retain a presence on these platforms as well. Um, where we do try to get a little bit creative around the rules. And I'll, I'll give you an example of this. The, the Kaaba tweet that I, the Kaaba rainbow thing that I put out, uh, yes, yes. You know, the only thing I wrote on that was I was like, it's great to see so many uh, LGBT people of Muslim heritage, mm -hmm. you know, coming out and marching at London Pride. We need to have more people like this to lead the conversation. Guys, That's it. I'm going to do something okay. in the live chat. I'm sending a test because, wow, YouTube is not letting me post on the live chat anymore. Maybe, are we, is it, uh, this is, mm. uh, right yes. as soon as we start. Right as soon I'll, as we talked about, uh, yes. but anyways, Ian, uh, Ian is asking. I, for, for me, it's okay. But anyway, anyway, let me just finish what I was saying. Yeah. So yeah. when I put that up, that tweet, Jimmy, had thousands of complaints to Twitter. Yeah. In fact, there was a whole campaign. Everybody was like, report this, report this. It's got about 5,000 responses. Everybody was like, report it. I was getting notifications like crazy on in my email. And mm. each one said that we have investigated this and we didn't find anything objectionable. And that, again, goes to this thing that we're talking about, about why the LGBT front is such a powerful yeah. thing. Because yeah. they can't, they, Twitter did not want to take it down uh -huh. because yeah. if they took it down, that would be homophobic, right? So so there are creative ways to work around it and, and bring people then to your other platforms. But you absolutely have to maintain a presence on okay. these major platforms as well. I agree. You absolutely do. I think conversely, uh, I wasn't so savvy when I, I posted the pic of the girls with the Allo's gay picture um, signs, and then there was a girl in the background with the Jesus is queer sign. And mm. when I posted that on my Facebook, I put uh, one of these women is holding a Jesus and queer sign, but nobody is threatening to kill her. I wonder what the difference is. Um, and that got reported, and it was reported as if I was saying that this girl should be getting killed, <laughs> like she should be getting death threats. Like, um, so I think you're right. I think when we're uh, and then and then Facebook uh, started their banning process, but you get to appeal it, and then I appealed it and wrote my bit, and then they came back and they 
um, said it was fine. But I think you're right. I think actually when, because we had a bit of a conversation, didn't we, I think on Twitter about how you had savvy, been quite savvy in your positioning of that tweet mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. there was no way you could report this tweet unless you were admitting that you were a homophobe. Right. And I think it is, it's about actually making sure that when we step, when we, when we utilize these platforms, doing it in a way that is quite savvy, but also is, and I guess that distinction is that we spoke about earlier between less I'm fighting Islam and more I'm standing for human rights. I, yeah, and that's the, where the difference, even though they are the same thing, I agree with yeah. Armin. There's, uh, so th this is a way, I, I tried it another, I did another experiment, which got the same kind of thing. I put up the picture of uh, the rainbow colored Qurans, which are on sale in Indonesia, right? Nothing to do with LGBT. Mm -hmm. I put that up and I just said, you know, hey, uh, LGBT people of Muslim heritage can now get these beautiful rainbow Qurans from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And now... That also, that got just as much of a, an outrage from these guys. But how, why is Twitter going to take down a rainbow Quran? Mm. It's a Quran and it's a rainbow. So there are ways you can do this stuff. And I think that we need to start exploring that um, now as well. Of course, we move to other platforms where we have our uncensored, no, no hold bars, no punches pulled discussions. But on these major platforms, we have to have a presence so that we can attract new people yeah. and then move them with us to our to the new platforms. I agree. Anyway. I don't think surrendering space is ever a good idea when you're yeah. uh, an activist. And then uh, Halima is also saying that she loves you, Jimmy. So you have a lot of love. People really love you, man. Um, oh, yeah, you. we need you more in this movement. Like you're you're such a huge part of this whole thing like you're extremely valuable thank you right um so yeah i think we just have a, a couple more not not a whole lot um about your sensor actually i think that's about it um no, ha jan skelton ha yeah halima had some questions earlier yeah she said uh being an atheist we know that the, all that is not correct but if they can still exist is it still better <laughs> I'm never okay. Uh, then in most majority <laughs> countries, okay. yeah. Okay, you mean okay? So just to make it clear, everything when I say um, I don't accept the argument that Islam is gay friendly, I'm not saying I'm against gay Muslims. Okay, again, the difference between fighting ideas and individuals. Okay, if I want every gay Muslim to be able to be enjoy being gay without being discriminated against i don't think that they should me fighting for their rights depends on them agreeing with me that islam is shit okay i'm not waiting for muslim gay muslims to agree with me that islam is shit before i fight for their rights and want them to enjoy being living a life free of oppression okay but while i while i hope that we can fight for the rights just because they're gay and Muslim does not mean that I'm ever going to let the idea that Islam can be gay friendly pass. If anybody says that anywhere, I'm going to react to it. Okay. I'm just going to react to it. You can't stop me. Okay. That's, okay. that's two different things. I accept yeah. gay Muslims and I want them to ha be happy and I'm going to fight Islam till the day I die. Right. But um, so I just want to put this out there because I think this distinction between fighting ideas or criticizing ideas and criticizing people, I really do think that our community is the worst community at understanding that distinction. Say that again. When I yeah, say, most, when most I say oh, I mean I mean the Muslim community as yeah. opposed to the ex-Muslim community. Right. I feel like their ability to distinguish between themselves right. and the criticism of Islam is very that's, very limited. That's and a it, feature, not a not not a bug. Okay, that's a feature. This is the power of again. I want to say it's by design, but it's not by design. It's just by the survival of the memes. This is yeah. a perfect defense strategy okay of course when yeah. you when when you mix the ideology with the identity then the attack on the ideology will become attack on your identity yeah it will and become personal is, and yeah. it becomes such a def such a powerful defense mechanism and the challenge for us is to separate the idea from the person the same way if you f attack capitalism 
people don't yeah. take it as personally as when you attack their religion, right? People of don't course. think like, no, you know, socialists and capitalists, they attack each other's idea, but I, I haven't heard socialists, they say like, don't criticize socialism because that's just offensive. You're just mm. attacking, why can't you just respect that I'm a socialist? Or a capitalist doesn't say like, hey, Oh, the, the social socialists should, start, should stop attacking capitalism because that's my identity. I've never heard that before. Okay, so you know, is Islam is 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 so is so perfect for Islam as a meme that this is merged because it doesn't have really that much log logical argument to back itself up. So it has to make it personal in places where blasphemy is not a law, right? Because in other in places where blasphemy cannot be forced by a government, then it's very important for the religion to yeah. become the identity. Right. So can but I, then I think that's yeah. further conflated by the whole, um, you know, definition of Islam. Mm. Uh, sorry, definition of Islamophobia, like so that or just the, that word, which then ideally conflates these two things together all over again. Very savvy it? as well. Yeah. yeah. Very savvy. Very savvy. Yeah. No. Um, um. I yeah. wanted to actually Darko, Darko Leskovsek brought about brought a really good point, and I want to kind of expand on this. So he said, "I would love if people would drop Islam, but if there are gay people out there that want to be accepted as an equal part of Islamic community, I'm all for it. We'll get them on our side eventually. I I, I, I don't think anybody here disagrees with that, but." I, I want one I thing. I, I disagree ask. with something, though. Okay, okay, sure. Uh, let, let me just say say this one thing about this: is that you know how we were talking about how if we don't, uh, if the liberals don't go out and talk about this issue, then the far right hijacks it. So, the, is there a question that if if ex Muslims, you know, fighting Islam, standing up for human rights, exact same thing, but if ex Muslims uh, present, if the messaging is fighting for universal human rights and the people, the gay kids in Muslim countries, they know that you're ex-Muslims, but you're just talking about it as framing it as a human rights issue. Um, isn't it possible? Isn't it a better thing for us to get there first, um, rather than the others? Yeah, okay, so let's me again. I'm not clear. Huh? Okay, not so clear. what I'm saying is, just like we don't want the far right to hijack this. Uh, Thing. We want liberals to talk about it so that the far right doesn't hijack it and make it into something more nefarious. Like, sh wouldn't it be helpful for us, for, for people who are uh, uh, ex-Muslims, to reach out to these sort of young, gay, persecuted, silenced people around the world for, of, in Muslim families, Muslim kids, mm -hmm. right, and reach out to them first? Right, in a way, by framing it as a human rights issue rather than just fighting Islam, because that might turn yeah. them off. Shouldn't we prioritize our messaging in a way that we get to them before they're hijacked by the? Uh, sort well, of the... okay, I have to respond to three things now. Okay, Hang on, hijacked, by, let, let, hijacked by who? Hijacked before by the the, by... the the Muslim LGBT people, but who are who who are actually going to throw you under the bus? Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. As oh, a gosh. messaging strategy, isn't it better no. to try and get to them first? I, I think I I kind of um, I, you know, and and that's almost like. When Armin's talking about people choking on their tongues, whether you become a gay ex-Muslim or a gay Muslim, so long as you're alive. And I think that's where, that's my priority. Which but I can, those can, unite, but can we, can we not? I'm just talking um, about a messaging question. Can we not suggest that when I say fighting Islam is more important that I'm the then goal is to save people like I'm not saying like gay be people be damned the truth matters like people's lives be damned I the truth matters no I'm no, saying no, the yeah, truth and I know I know you're not saying that but I, I think a lot of people like as long as we can save gay people yeah but that's that's the entire point here but what, what we're disagreeing is about the way to save lives mm -hmm. I'm not saying people lives don't matter the truth matters more than people's lives what i'm suggesting is that the truth is the most efficient way of saving people's yeah, lives so but the way when yeah. i'm talking about it with the way i'm talking about the messaging how we said that saying we're fighting islam or saying that we're standing up for human rights are the same thing yes they're the same way but this made me think darko's question made me think that maybe how we frame it and of course the I way that you message something how you frame it but... makes a difference so is there an argument to be made no. that it is better to frame it the way you say it jimmy and standing up for human rights because these people they already know we're not hiding that we're ex-muslim but if you frame it that way it is not as it's more welcoming to them it's not so i think 
I think, hang on, so I think, you know, so we talked about, like, there were some people who would never march with me in gay pride, but might agree with my right to blaspheme. Yeah? Gonna, for people watching, I want them to see Armin's face. That's all. <laughs> That's just amazing. Right? He's like, ah! Oh. Yeah, you know, it, it takes a yeah. lot of strength for um, me to, you know, a lot of people think, like, I interrupt a lot. You have no idea how much <laughs> work it takes for me not it, to listen, interrupt. Like, I'm really trying. Okay, it's so, a so, so I, th I think I think uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think like I don't know if I'd be walking around um, with gay Muslims in pride holding a sign saying um, Allah loves us all, yeah, like uh, or Allah loves equality or something like that. Because fundamentally, there's a message that I actually I don't agree with. I think that um, Allah doesn't exist, and he's probably not loving anything from his. Um, yeah. In significance uh, but similarly i think some I, I think gay muslims who might even understand why we blaspheme couldn't necessarily walk around with a sign saying less islam more orgasms mm -hmm. because that would seem antithetical to the religious position so i think by saying that we are fighting for universal human rights, which is always what I've thought I'm doing, actually. I've never thought I'm fighting Islam. And so I haven't even, it's, I've, I don't think I've even heard that phrase until until today. But um, but I think <laughs> by, by saying that I'm fighting for universal hu human rights, I do alienate less people than if I would say I'm fighting Islam. Okay, I fundamentally disagree with this, and I say this by experience. Okay. More Muslims will find you and reach out to you and hear you the more anti-Islam you are. Mm. The more passive and wishy-washy and hey, let's hold a hand, kumbaya, I'm not going to try to be offensive, this language is mm. going to not hurt your feelings, maybe I'm going to alienate you if I say this. The more you're concerned about that, the less Muslims will actually hear what you have to say. So I, I think, you know, like uh, your... your you're speaking to the wrong person if you think I'm worried about offending Muslims. No, 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 I wasn't. No, 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 no. That was um, not a so, response to you. That was okay, a response to Ali. Speaking. In fact, I'm surprised that Ali hey. thinks that you're on that side, given that yeah. you're a person that goes out and says, No, hold on. No, let me yeah. finish the sentence, Ali. I think maybe I'm in between you two. No, guys, no, no. In the middle yeah, I'm just saying that yeah. uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy is not. Uh, you're more uh, with me, Jimmy. Jimmy uh, is on yeah, the too. side of fuck Islam. Given that she, Jimmy is goes in the Pride Parade and says less Sharia, more, uh, more, more what? More love. More love. More love. More, yeah. More. So that's that's a that's a fuck you Islam position. That's not like hey Allah Allah loves LGBT Allah loves equality position, which we like hey that might be more inclusive that might invite more people. People no, it doesn't. We when we go and make when Ali's Ali's post when you put a rain, rainbow Kaaba out there, the more offensive you are, the more Muslims are going to notice you. In fact, that's the yeah, strategy yeah, yeah. that all three of us but, are using actually, and has the like, most results. Ali's, Ali's post was more inclusive. Ali's post, a rainbow on the Kaaba, is quite an inclusive post. And offensive. To, that's and that's offensive. what I'm getting at. That's I what I'm getting at. The offensive gay, part is the, most, is the, the, the reason why it works. It, I think. Yeah, if, you, if think, you're creative enough, you can do both. That's what I'm trying to say. Look, the, the, what I'm saying, I work in communications, so I know that messaging is important. At the mm. same time, I also, I have, just like the, you guys, I have received emails from people saying that your post really pissed me off and I was very offended. I was a religious Muslim, but now I agree with you. Can you unblock me? Can you unmute me? You know, that kind of thing. Mm. So mm. there are, I have gotten this. I know that offending people and, you know, as long as you get the attention, I know that all of that stuff works. But I, I'm talking about doing it in a way that is inclusive, that also doesn't compromise on your criticism, and it's, it's also yeah. like the, it's no, like the, the Kaaba thing. thing. The Kaaba thing. The, hold I on, Armin. Armin. The, the, the Kaaba thing the was line. very. It was offensive, right? And you, and you created it. it. Was very offensive. And then the way I framed it, it was also inclusive. And that I think is the mm. best double whammy to do. And well, I'm just saying that we need to find. As opposed to what? Wait, listen. 
I, I'll give you an example. You say we're standing up for universal human rights. Like, that is the main message that you go with. Well, who are you? We're ex-Muslims. So does that mean that you're fighting Islam? Yes, fighting Islam is part of our thing of universal human rights, standing up for it. So yes, that is part of it. But we that our main thing is about human rights, and that's what we yeah, want to do. Yeah, but inclusive and, yes. as opposed to what? Like, give me an example that it could not have been no, inclusive. No, I'm not talking so, about on, anything. So, I'm talking on. about no, no, messaging, only messaging. Well, yeah, so messaging, if, inclusive. If, how if you is think it? about hmm. if you think about the difference between holding a sign that says fuck Islam or a sign that says fuck Islamic homophobia but and has fuck Islam in one colour, I think that is the distinction that you're kind of talking about, actually. Yes. Do you understand? Yeah. So when I wrote that sign, when I was making that fuck Islamic homophobia sign, I could have just had a sign that said fuck Islam. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. in favour of a sign that <laughs> just says fuck Islam. I know, I know you are, and I think that's where our difference is. is that so for so, me, so why like, did you do that, Jimmy? Why did you make because it? Because my challenge is towards Islamic homophobia. So, so I wanted to, and I also wanted that sign to capture things, because when I was both a Muslim and an ex-Muslim, even when I was Muslim, and I would go to mosque and they'd be like, you have to die. And all of that stuff that Armin just said about what we do to gay people. Even that was when I was Muslim. So even when I was Muslim, I used to think, fuck Islam, right? Yeah, but uh, that was fuck not Islamic because... Islamic homophobia. Right. Like, uh, and so I wanted the sign to capture those degrees no, but, of nuance. But didn't you also, but... didn't you also have, uh, weren't you also, con because you keep on, you've said several times in this podcast, mm. you've said, going back to thinking when I was Muslim. And yeah, how yeah. you perceive things when you're Muslim. So weren't you also conscious of the Completely. messaging when you Completely. said that? You said, "Okay, I'm going to do a fuck Islamic homophobia rather than fuck and Islam." It's, but you're so much when it's a, you're missing and the also, points. Yeah, it was more clever. It's a bit more nuanced. Yeah, like, it, what, you're missing what the points. More discourse. Like if someone has a sign saying "fuck Islam" and I have a sign saying "fuck Islamic homophobia," I think the latter generates more conversation because it's okay. It's, no, no, they both they yeah. both they both generate conversation. This is one of those examples. I do. I'm just, yeah. but no, one like, like let me let me say something. No, no, no. This is the example. This is the example where I agree with why not both? Okay, because they're both helpful. Okay. okay? Yeah. Because unlike the example where Ali gave, gave why, why, why not both, none of these is destructive. This is an example I say we have we need both of these, okay? Oh, I agree and, with both. And the direction, have, and the direction yeah. you have to understand, the direction where I think Jimmy was going with the sign was it said, the sign was saying, fuck Islamic homophobia, and then he looked at it and he decided to color it in a way where the fuck Islam part stands out by its own, okay? Yeah. So that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Well, all right. Anyways, but we did. But we, I wouldn't have had a sign that just said "fuck Islam." I don't know if I'll yeah. ever walk around. With I'm, a not sign that says, Fuck Islam. I'm not saying you should. I'm, I'm not, not saying you should. I'm not saying you should, but I think I'm someone is, should. There's a. What is the reason? Is like, <laughs> I would actually. I think one of those messages is more useful than the other. Because messages well, so you're okay, both okay, okay. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. But in this, does, yeah. I agree with this. But at because the same one of them time, gives you an opportunity to smile at the ingenuity. No, 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 but like if, the other one doesn't. I, I will agree <laughs> with you until somebody says, until somebody says, okay, this fuck Islam, fuck, uh, is, uh, fuck Islamic homophobia is fine. And then as soon as fuck somebody, Islam isn't, yeah. as, so, as soon as somebody fuck says Islam. fuck, then saying fuck Islam is taking it too far. At yeah. that point, that's when you need a fuck Islam sign, okay? You thought yeah. YouTube was going to take this down because something I said? Or no, five. Okay, can yeah. you, say, said, can, like, can you actually really read the times, Patreon yeah. post again? Because I never got a chance to respond to the <laughs> I comment. Know, no, no, I know. I'm, can, I'm you teasing, I'm can you read the Draco comment? Because I actually never... Who... Can you oh, watch? the Draco <laughs> comment? Okay, yeah. let me... Because uh, that, I was trying just... to, like, we just started our own discussion and we're not responding to... No, he, he was saying, he he's like, I would love if people would drop Islam, but if there are gay people out there that want to be accepted as okay. an equal part of Islamic community, I'm all for it. We'll get them on me our too. side eventually. Okay, okay, you're missing... Right. Draco, you're See, Jimmy missing... is with me, Armin. I'm with you. Can I'm you let Draco. me speak? Well, everybody thinks okay. I, I completely... Oh my god, Armin, um, you've been... Spew your I haven't, I haven't. I can time you, Mali. Okay. But, okay, <laughs> again, I completely lost it. Read Draco's comment one more time. I said, okay, he said, I'm okay with, P I'm okay with what? I wish. There's two parts uh, to this. He I said, I would love if people could drop Islam, but there are gay people out there that want to be accepted as an equal part of Islamic community. I'm all for it. We'll get them on our side eventually. We have about no. uh Okay, minutes, no, this, is, so this, is, just, this yeah. needs a response, okay? Uh, this there's, there's two main things. Sorry, I'm 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 gonna attack one of our patrons. We're gonna lose patrons like this. 
But I'm gonna <laughs> first of all when the the idea okay Draco when you say I'm all for it if people want to be uh, gay um and what, is that what he said I'm all for it mm. if some people want to keep yeah. their Islam and be gay at the same yeah. time but what is that a response to first of all there's I want to uh, analyze this D like is that a response to anybody saying like no people shouldn't be I, I know, Draco, you're not saying that, but I just don't get what that is a response to. Because it's a response to Islam is homophobic intrinsically. You cannot make it not homophobic but to stop I, being I, a gay Muslim. I personally, I don't know if Draco is responding to anything I'm saying, but I, per I don't think there's ever a suggestion that is made that until you leave Islam, you don't get to enjoy, you don't get to support LGBT rights unless you leave Islam. I've never made a suggestion like that. No, but okay? some people do make the suggestion that why are you okay, being at least a gay I'm not person making it in a homophobic, I'm... abrahamic faith? Okay, no, no, I, I disagree with you, and I think you have a shitty idea that I'm going to fight against. If you're, if you're fighting for LGBT rights and fighting also and also saying that Islam is great, I can at the same time congratulate you for fighting for LGBT rights while calling you out for accepting Islam, okay? I could do those things at the same time, okay? And I'm never going to make it a condition for you to fight for LGBT rights only after you leave Islam. I've never said that and I never suggested that, okay? I know how other about, people... How about right. leaving them alone? How about someone no. says I'm a gay Muslim and you're like, okay, chill. That I'm, sounds I'm, cool. Not just them. Even, even uh, anybody that wants to be left alone, I'm not going to force my content on them. Mm -hmm. No, not so them. Speaking not of patrons. No, hold on. Uh, let me. Let, I have to respond to this. You can't. Yeah, why are you going to lose? Been... Why are you going to lose patrons over this? this no, stuff. I'm just kidding. No, you're not going to lose kidding. patrons. That's I'm not what kidding. I'm kidding. That... Let me make my point. I'm kidding. Sure. Let him talk. <laughs> I, okay. I'm. <laughs> um, I lost my chance. <laughs> no, Ali, go, you have to stop. Ali, you really have to oh, stop yeah. interrupting me when I'm trying to make a point because I completely lose my. The yeah, yeah, come on, guys! Come on, you're my favorite gay couple, okay. but I can't spend all my time with you. Let him uh, make the point. <laughs> okay, so not just not just gay Muslims, a, a Muslims that is also homophobe. If he says like, listen, I don't want to listen to you. I'm not even going to bother them. They have to give me the green light for me to have a discussion with them. Anywhere yeah. else, I'm uh, anywhere else that we're having these discussions is on our platform. They're coming to us. We're not coming to them. Okay. So it doesn't. So another thing that when when Draco says eventually, eventually, that's a suggestion that this is the middle ground. Mm. It's not a middle ground. This is a step in the wrong direction, okay? When you advocate for, and I know Draco is not doing that, but when you advocate that Islam accepts LGBT, you're not, this is a, not, a, not a middle ground between LGBT and ex-Muslim. This is in a different direction where people are comfortable with Islam. This is advocating Islam. This is not a middle ground between Islam and ex-Muslim. This is a step in the opposite direction, advocating for the opposite side, taking people away from being ex-Muslim. Yeah. I, I will but, respond. But it is a step in the direction of um, gay safety. So that's what Halima, this is your, um, Jimmy, just what you said on another one of our patrons and our former guest, Halima, as I mentioned, is saying that the point that she was making, um, and she's saying her point is to Armin, she's saying the point I was making was to accept the humans who try to convince themselves that they can exist as Muslim as gay, especially for those who do not live in Muslim majority countries. And the goal is to save people as humans. And she says that she has had friends uh, who have committed suicide uh, oh. because of this. And that's why she thinks that, I think she's more aligned with Jimmy's yeah, approach but in I that sense. No, Jimmy's approach is my safety. approach. I don't understand what you're talking about. Uh, sorry, Halima. My, my, my point is that you don't need to tell people that it's okay for them to be gay as Muslim. Just tell them it's okay to be gay. Drop the as Muslim part. This is, this is a universal message. You, it's okay to be gay, okay? Yeah, okay. Anyway... Sorry, I mean, sorry, good. sorry for our patrons for being a little bit aggressive today. But that's this okay. Yeah. It's okay. Hey, listen. You know, Jan Jan Skelton was actually saying, "I love the disagreement in these podcasts. It's healthy." So you know, hey, this whole Armin, you and I, the virtual gay couple thing uh, that Jimmy's saying, I think it's a good thing. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, we're gonna say uh, bye now. Thank you, Jimmy, for coming on. I have so much more to talk to you. You're probably Thank gonna you. come back. Yeah, I'm because you're one of our favorite people. So we're gonna and do a secular job this podcast when I'm in London. With Jimmy when I'm read 
uh, when right next to him, like something like that. Is that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's listen. We absolutely have to do that. So, Jimmy, yeah. you got to come back in the next few weeks when Armin's yeah. in cool, London. Cool. More than happy to. Okay. Yeah. So everybody else, you know, Sophia Johnson, obviously, uh, Darko, Halima, Mars, um, all of you guys who came here again and joined and, and listened and engaged with us. And, you know, we've got quite a few people here today. Jan Skelton, thank you very much. Ian Foote is here. Um, hey, Ian. Yeah, Ian Foote. And uh, so he was talking about, you know, the, the unintended plus that I was saying about the alliance between the regressive left and Islam. Um, he commented on that. He thought that was interesting. And uh, yeah, everybody else, uh, thank you very much. Thanks for yeah. joining. And, and just, uh, just, we're to, gonna... just to end it all, uh, you know, gay people will end Islam, okay? LGBT, that's going to be our weapon, and we're going to put uh, our gays in the front line, okay? We are going to be the sword that penetrates Islam. Yes. <laughs> I love that. What a double on. That's great. I wonder what else that could mean. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Uh, bye. A stomp. Bye, bye, Ian, Jan, Sophia, Lima, <laughs> Darko. Yeah. I love it. I'll see you guys next Chris. time. Chris. <laughs> Give me stay on for just a second. All right. <laughs> sure. Love you all. Thank you. The secular jihadists have been made possible thanks to the Illuminati and the covert support of Israel and the CIA. That's what we have been told, but we haven't received our checks yet. If you like what we do, please support us. Share the podcast with your friends. Write and tweet us with topic and guest suggestions. Or head over to secularjihadist.com and give a dollar or more for exclusive access to live video. Have your questions read and answered on the air and more. Till next time, may the flying spaghetti monster be with you.